souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, you're going to win souls and you're going to bring in the harvest of souls. You have to get the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got to burn on the inside of you. So we're going to see the harvest coming. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not going to have my country. You're not going to have my nation. The whole of Africa is going to be shaken by the hand of God. I see Africa ablaze. Well, welcome to Thursday night, March the 21st. It's just off the seven o'clock and we are live from Studio B. Now, over in Studio A is a ladies' conference. Thousands of ladies are there, it's phenomenal. And of course, um, my wife said to me, would you come over and speak? I said, no, they didn't come here to hear me. They came to hear you, it's a ladies' conference. You'll do a great job. I will slip out to go greet them and then I'll be right back. But Pastor Eric Gonyan's with me tonight, and we have a special guest showing up here tonight. So it's going to be awesome, four hours live, and this is the continuation of Monday's Soulathon. Now, if the guys, I can't see this monitor over here. Okay, I'll look. I'll have to look at that one. We are now sitting at four hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Now, when we started on Monday, Pastor Eric, I felt in my spirit that we should believe God for half a million, which. In my mind, I was arguing with, you know, the, I felt the Lord say, because we did 12 hours of prayer, and, I th and the Lord said, you know, you actually have a network. I know, okay, yeah, we do have a network. Put up where we're covering right by satellite, guys. Put it up quickly, if you would, please. All the satellite, where all the satellites are. Okay, so there you can see. This now, obviously, is free-to-air satellites. However, it's in many, many cable homes. And uh, we got people calling us from the Middle East, people call us from Russia, they're watching, it's in Hong Kong, it's all over. And so it's really a 24 hours, seven days a week network that's called Revival TV. And you can go to the website revivaltv.com and you'll see. Plus we have many other, um, basically, uh, we, we just signed on another 40 million homes across Sub-Saharan Africa on uh, it was, it was a Saturday night. Someone texted me, said, I'm sitting in Zanzibar. Uh -huh. And I went to somebody's house. And there, um, that had to do with master control. <laughs> um, they, we, we actually got two meetings going on here. There's one broadcasting live over there and one over here. So um, anyway, as I said, so they, t they text me from Tanzania a picture of somebody sitting in Tanzania watching. Wow. And, and I said, are they they're watching on YouTube? They said, no, they're watching on your RTV, uh, Revival TV's channel. So there's many people watching. Plus, from 7 to 11, we are on the Dish and Direct TV. So this is live across America for four hours. So this is very important, what we're going to do here tonight and as you can see, we just are 418,000, which I never thought. By the end of Monday night, we were at about 198,000. And then I told you, I said, listen, we're going to come back live Tuesday. We went live for six hours, well, a 12-hour run, but you and I were interacting with ourselves, and we crossed over 300,000. And then last night, we went over 400,000. Wow. We're at 418,000. And so tonight, we're going to go over half a million, which is what I felt the Lord tell me to believe. And then tomorrow night, we'll just be over the top. So it's going to be totally phenomenal. And um, I'm excited. And I feel we're going to go a little different route here tonight. And I know you've got a bunch of things we're going to talk about. And then we have a special guest who just walked in here, Dr. Ted Shuttlesworth, <laughs> senior, who is my dear friend for many, 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 many years. And obviously, we didn't have a, a continuation over here, guys, if you don't mind trying to get a camera on him soon so the people can see him. Okay. So, thank you for coming to be a part with us. Thank you for inviting us. Amen. 
And thanks for turning the mic on. Wonderful. <laughs> Hello, Brother Ganya. Good to see you, anyway, too. Anyway, so what we're going to do tonight, you know, I just, God dropped the number in my spirit, and the Lord said to me, you have a network, you might as well use it. Everybody else uses theirs. We just put the gospel out. Obviously, when we do our meetings, we receive love offerings and stuff like that. But I believe that this is important, that the Lord wants this done, and we're about to leave in two weeks' time for seven countries. Actually, in fact, it's eight now. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Well, almost eight, yeah. Okay. It looks like so it's going to be eight. We've got a call from Ghana. They want us to stop in for one night, <laughs> speak to a bunch of leaders. So I went, oh, okay. All right. Okay, guys, this cannot happen, okay? Please, can you run back into television and tell them it can't happen? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Live TV. <laughs> yeah, master control. Go to master control. Can I tell you something that happened to me this morning? I got up early uh, to pray, and uh, I had planned on coming up, maybe having lunch with Brother Rodney, and then I had a couple appointments, and I was going to go to him. So when I uh, got a hold of him this morning, he said, I'm doing a solothon. I want you to be a part of it. But what I didn't tell him was, before he told me that, I had this vision of uh, me speaking about souls, and the connection between souls and money. It's like I was hearing a message, and he was standing next to me laughing. And <laughs> it was maybe a five, six-second vision. And I told my wife about it. That's why I brought her, so she can confirm it. And she said, no, we're just going to get lunch. And then her, her father will take care of some of his business since he went to be with the Lord. And I, I said to Bonnie, look what Brother Rodney said. So we changed everything to be here tonight because... It was the Lord's plan. Wow. And I wanted to encourage you that you're right. I've never known Brother Rodney to miss it. Now, he probably does, but I don't remember ever. <laughs> I mean, I've known him for almost 35 years. One of the greatest ministries uh, around the world is sitting next to us. God's gifted him, anointed him. Not only that, is he accurate in the spirit He's one of the kindest, and I've been around a lot of ministries and ministers, but one of the trademarks, except for yelling about Jennifer on the sound system, is <laughs> no, he's, he's very kind. Amen. <laughs> one of the kindest people that I've ever, ever been around, and we love him, and uh, we've all had our moments, and I'll talk about <laughs> Fluffy the Cat later. But anyhow, uh, I want to just say to you that are watching, this is somehow ordained of God. Uh, and my wife, as we were leaving to come over, she said, Brother Rodney's always been a big blessing to you. And she said, I believe God wanted you to be a blessing to him tonight. And so that's how it works. Iron sharpens iron. And uh, it's going to be a great night. Uh, he has at least six books to come to you from and notes. And I've got like two verses. So we'll see how the Lord uses it. Amen. <laughs> But that really happened this morning during prayer. Wow. And I can count on two hands the number of times I've ever seen something. So this must be very, very important in the will of God, this African uh, outreach. And um, I was just reading, Africa is the wealthiest continent in the world. That's right. It has 60% arable land that can be turned into farming and could feed the whole continent. And you know what they're doing? The Chinese are coming over, taking over everything. The United Nations are taking over everything, and they're basically pillaging whole African countries. And basically, they take all the soil out. They're mining. They, they, they do not even mine it in the country. They just take the ore, put it on ships, and take it to China, and then mine it there. But they don't know. They're pulling out diamonds, gold, uranium, platinum, and everything else in between. And so that's one of the messages. And when we go, we talk to world leaders, say, we talk to the kings and the leaders, you have to, you have to protect your soil. You have to protect your land. The, the, the first lady of Kenya said to me, they're chopping down all our baobab trees. If you know anything about a baobab tree, they, they are six, seven, eight hundred years old. They're beautiful. Chopping them down. Just chopping them down. Mm. And um, so it's a very great concern to me. And they, they are being taken advantage of. It's funny because one of the things the Lord spoke to me about in this morning prayer was China. At some point, I'll tell you what he told me that he's going to cause to happen in China. 
which will uh, put a stop to a lot of what they're doing right now. Yeah, well, they, they, and then he spoke to me about the United Nations uh, last night, a couple nights ago. Yes, sir. So God is right now positioning everything for a mighty uh, wave of the Spirit to sweep the continent of Africa. And it's not a coincidence uh, or uh, just the desire of your heart, although I'm sure it is. God is thrusting you to go in and change a continent. I, I, can't, I can't shake it. In actual fact, when I, when I think about it, I just weep. Hmm. It's, it's like compelling. It's, it's, I have to do it. This and that has happened to, be done. to me today. Bonnie can tell you, I just started weeping. I had to stop. Uh, just thinking about what God's getting ready to do yeah. on the continent of Africa. Yeah. So, okay, Monday, we set 12 hours of prayer to pray for Africa, which we do once a month. We do 12 hours of prayer. And when I, I called Pastor Eric, I said, listen, we're flipping this thing. He said, what do you mean? I said, we're flipping it. Hmm. I said, for what? The, the, Lord, <laughs> the Lord said to me, we need to believe him for half a million dollars, at least this week. So anyway, you bring it around that way, not through the camera field. Okay, I know I'm directing the thing. <laughs> um, anyway, so Pastor Shannon, use that way to come up when you come up. Um, and so uh, he said, look, you have a network. And then especially at night, like from now to 11 o'clock, we are live on Dish and Direct TV. That's Minnie's Homes. And then on all the other stations, which I won't go into now. And he said, believe me for the money to come. So we started offering different packages, which I've cut down tonight. I actually said, if you, if you sow a million dollars, we'll fly you to Cape Town. You could be in part of the stadium. And um, then if you sow 100,000, I'll fly you to my camp meeting for eight days, pay all your hotel food, everything, and I have a private meal with you, which I've never done anything like that before. And then we did $10,000 gifts, which a lot of people have been responding to that, and $5,000, 2500 and 1000 But as we even said last night, a lot of people, they can at least do 300 which 300 will take care of a bus, and how much will take care of a taxi? 80 $80. And which... When we get to talk about Cape Town tonight, you'll understand what we're doing. We have 99,000 people that have already got tickets to the Cape Town Stadium, which only holds 30,000. So obviously it's over three nights. Now, that meeting is going to be by satellite back to America. So on Friday, when we go in the meeting at 1 o'clock, it'll be live in the sanctuary. And on Saturday at 11 o'clock, it'll be live in the sanctuary. And Sunday morning, It'll be part of our Sunday morning service. So people will come in at 9.30, praise and worship, testimonies, and then they'll be joining us in the stadium. It's a very significant meeting because one month after that is the national elections taking place in Southern Africa. And we are on the brink of a civil war there between the tribes and people fighting for power within the country. So I feel that this is very strategic. Everyone says that you could not come at a better time for the nation. So this is what's taking place. And then the same goes for some of the other countries. So we leave here on the 3rd. We go straight into Gaborone, Botswana, which we were there last year. But the, the, there was a conflict between the bishops. The younger bishops and the older bishops were fighting. So they didn't. When we left the platform, I said to Pastor Eric, uh, I, did, I don't think we could have had a breakthrough here. But the moment we walked into the back room, the power of God hit. Bodies were everywhere. And what God couldn't do in the service because they were divided, he did in the back room. Heads of government, they were on the floor. People were all under the power. So when we left, they said, please would Brother Rodney come back because the younger bishops and the older bishops sorted out their differences and said, we will be able to hear you better at this time because we weren't in a place. Here. So it's like the Lord did it. Not in the service like I wanted. It was still a great altar call and people mobilized, but we, we didn't get there. And I, I felt like, oh, don't tell me we failed here. But in the back room, it blitzed the place. It was like the craziest thing. I've never seen such a move of God in the back room. In where all, it was like yeah, it was. The, people would slam by the power. There was a, how old was that kid? He was like 11 years old 11, or something. Dressed right. like he looked like a bishop. He, he looked like he, he was dressed for the line. I mean, little Botswana boy. The power of God hit him. He was shaking. I prophesied of him. Then I started prophesying to his mother and then spoke the word of the Lord to the bishop there. And this one. So now we're going into a church. How many are registered for that? Do you know? Um, I believe it's over 1,500. 
I believe we, uh, it's over, over a thousand deaf. No, I'm sorry. Past the seats. So many, we have this 3,000 people. 3,000 3, seats. seats. Yeah, seats 3,000. I don't know exactly how many people are registered. Okay. I'll get you the number right now. Anyway, bottom line is we still, what, two weeks away from that. So it's going to be an awesome meeting. Then, then we go to Maun, which is going to be a gathering of 500 pastors, which pass all up through the Okavongo Delta. Some of them are over in Zambia. Some of them are even in Angola. And these are rural pastors, so we're going to have a special uh, meeting with them. Then from there, we go to Madagascar, to Antananarivo, which I've never been before. The building holds about 6,000. And uh, two pastors, a pastor and evangelist, contacted me from the island of Reunion. So you've got Africa, then you have Madagascar, then you have Reunion, and then Mauritius and Seychelles. And they said, we can't wait to come. Please, would you lay hands on us? We want you to come to Reunion. So... Anyway, so we'll be there. From there, we go to Lesotho. So the two countries we're adding, I've never been to Madagascar and to Reunion. I mean, Madagascar and to Lesotho. And this is a beautiful area, mountainous region. It's the red blanket, the tribe, they all wear blankets and everything. And it's, it's, it looks like Switzerland there. The mountains grow 14,500 feet and stuff. And it's spread out over the land, probably 2.5 million people that live there. And we go to Masira, to the capital. So that, that will be a phenomenal meeting. It'll light a fire, mobilize the pastors to win souls. And what we're doing, every altar call that we do, we are not only going to get them saved, we're going to get them baptized in the Holy Ghost, and then we're going to mobilize them and put the tools in their hand to win souls. So on their way home, they can lead people to Jesus, which is what the church should be doing anyway. And then also we're making special signs for each site where the pastors that are involved in the meeting will take the sign and put it at the church. So when people the next week they're driving along, go along, they see, oh, that's the sign of the crusade I've just been in, and that's the church I need to go to, which we will tell everybody at the altar call so that we can see the growth of the local church. And then, so from Lesotho, then we go to Cape Town. Cape Town, if you put the stadium up for us, please put, stick the stadium. This is the only stadium in the city that we could use. This stadium holds 30,000. There's never been a gospel crusade there, ever. And the miracle that happened a few weeks ago, they showed me how on the opposite side that they wanted to put the platform with the giant screens and everything. You see that other side there? And, and we would lose that whole side, which would mean we would lose 4,700 seats. And I'm sitting there, I said, we can't lose. We're already limited to 30,000, and we got 99,000 people registered. And I said, Lord, what are we going to do? And he said, think back to the Crusades. Of, you grew up watching Billy Graham, A. Allen, or Roberts, all of the Crusades. Where was the platform? It was in the middle of the field. Were there giant screens? No. He said, remove all that. Just put a platform in the middle. So put that picture up you just put up. So this is the design. I'm so excited about it. We don't lose any seats, Brother Ted. We lose no seats. You can look. There's a screen right down below your table right there. We don't lose any seats, and there are fences around for security purposes. They're going to let us remove some of the fences, and you see the exits. There will be screens over there, but we don't lose any seats, and there's room for the altar call, and everybody come down. And I, it hit me like a sledgehammer. He said, you don't need the giant screens so people can watch them on it. And the, and the, and the seats will come down from each section the, onto the They will the flow field. onto the field. Yeah. So now it's like, it's like the Holy Ghost is like next level. I mean, as a genius, but <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I saw the Crusades and I actually pulled up the fields. I went quickly. I pulled up Billy Graham. I pulled up all the Crusades and, and where's the platform? In the middle, there was 100,000 people, a little platform in the middle, and it's the sound, and they can hear the gospel. So, I'm so, there, there, look at that. So, look at that, where the platform is, in the middle. Look at that, look where the platform is, in the middle. There are no giant screens. You don't need giant screens. The Lord said, forget about technology, just preach the gospel. So I'm so excited. We, we've gone back to the original pattern where we don't need to lose seats and these giant screens so everybody can see themselves on, on a screen. I don't need to see myself on a screen. I need seats 
to put people in. Now, obviously, yeah. if there's nobody coming, take up the whole <laughs> building for screens. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But so I'm so excited about it. So I'm very happy. So we'll be there three nights. That's going to be probably, I feel, a landmark meeting. Um, and I believe it will set the stage. One of the things I've told the church, okay, we're on a 300 city tour. We've done how many cities? 250. 56. 256. I'm going to finish that this year. And then something I never thought I would do, because I never planned to do a stadium meeting. I said, Lord, I'll help all the young guys do that. He said, you'll help them too, but you're going to do, you're going to hit the stadiums hard. I said, oh, God. I never think. So we're going to finish 300 cities, and then I'm going to hit 300 stadiums, and I'm believing God, and we're going to see that happen in America. We just got a call from Buenos Aires. There's a 30,000 city stadium. Please, can you come? We're going to call from, I mean, I've never had so many offers for stadiums, which I don't like, even care. A pastor called us from Sydney, Australia. They said, we want you to come. He said, I'm going to pay for the stadium here. Like, he, and this was back six months ago. He called me and said, I want you to come and do the stadium in Sydney. It's not even on my list of places to go. Why would I want to go to Sydney, Australia? He said, oh, I'll pay for the whole stadium, Pastor. I have the faith. I saw you in a dream preaching in the stadium. And I said, not me. I was actually kind of rude to him. I felt sorry. <laughs> I have called him subsequently, but I just like, not me, other people. No, no, you. I saw you in a dream. I said, not me, other people. Get somebody else. I'm not doing the stadium. So, and then one of the things that the, then the Lord quickened to me before Bob DeAndre died, you know, and he put us on CT and everything, he called me and he said, you know, he spoke very quietly. He said, Brother Rodney, I said, yes. He said, I see you. I said, you see me? He said, yes. I said, where? He said, in the Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. I said, what do you mean? No, you will be there. You'll be preaching there. I said, with what? He said, like a Billy Graham crusade. I said, not me. Somebody else. No, you. I said, no. He said, no, you. And it was like three weeks before he died. So obviously the Lord put all that stuff together. So I don't do I feel that I'm the one to do it. No, I don't. After 44 years in the ministry, I wish he would just pick somebody else. But mm. would I do it? I'll do whatever he tells me to do. I'd walk from here to Los Angeles in my underpants if I thought it would bring about the revival. Because <laughs> you know, mm. the prophet walks around with his behind exposed, you know, for three and a half years. So I thought, <laughs> okay, you know, whatever. Whatever it takes, we'll do. Because... It's not about your reputation anyway. I got arrested, I have a mugshot, it's gone around the world so and then everybody's lied about you, made it up, all kinds of stories, so it doesn't really matter. Whatever you believe, go ahead and knock yourself out. Anyway, so Cape Town's gonna be very strategic. Then from there we go to um uh, Peter Maritzburg, which is a city my whole family, my uncle was there a hundred years ago. He built the biggest Pentecostal school in the nation. Pentecost on the front veranda, well, actually, a little thing back in, um, right after the Great Depression in the 30s, so 90 years ago. And when he died, he was 93, and that was back in the late 90s. So, you know, he, he was a lot older than my father. And um, all the Howard Browns have been there, of course, they're my cousins and my second cousins, third cousins, and stuff like that. And so I've never really preached in that city, so we're going to go there. And that's crazy. They, they already have thousands registered. They're actually going to block the city streets to try to put screens with overflow. So that's going to be there. And then we go from there to Zambia to dedicate a church that we've helped pay for. And we were going to go in and stay two, two nights or whatever, but we had to, we had to go in. We're going to fly in. We're going to land and go back out. And the reason being, this is crazy. The military have come in and taken over the whole place. Now, I'm not talking about one military. I'm talking about... Oh, yeah. Our hotels were snapped up by all the military. They're doing a massive gathering of militaries there in Livingston at the same time that we're there. So we had no place to stay. 
So we just got to fly in, go do the service, and then fly straight out. And I was thinking, maybe the Lord wants me to just speak a word to shut down whatever they're planning behind. This is not right. What's going on there, it sounds like trying to shift the whole of the Central Africa, that region of Africa militarily. I don't know what's going on, but we had all our hotel rooms booked, and then suddenly everything canceled. And um, anyway, so we're going to be there one night. And then from there, we go to Cameroon, which I've never been there. And then we go to, 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 to Togo, we'll be there. And of course, now they want us to add Ghana on for one, one day. And we'll stop and speak to the leaders. We'll see what happens. Pastor Eric's working on it. So that's what this is about. If you're watching, you joined us live. Dr. Ghanian's with me. Dr. Shuttlesworth Senior is with me. And we're going to have a great night between now and 11 o'clock. So you have an opportunity to sow seed. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, turn you loose. You can preach to whatever, preach, pray, prophesy. Just so you know, you can see what happened overnight, another 18. We were at 403,000. Oh, it's just clocked over 419,000. So everybody can do something tonight. But here, uh, Patrick from Livonia, Michigan, sent in $1,500. Uh, Roberta from Lovettsville, Virginia, $300. Thank you. Joshua, $15 from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Joshua. Then Patricia from Little Rock, Arkansas, 150. Gregory, $100. I'm not sure where you are, but thank you. Samuel James from Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire in the United Kingdom, $100. Thank you. Oh, hi there, laddie. All right, then Elizabeth, $50. Darwin, sowing $150 from Sarnia, Ontario, Canada, which you've ministered up there, and I have too. And then uh, um, to... Tanania and Calvin, $7. Thank you. Julia, $300 from Deborah, Iowa, and Reverend Joseph from Muscatine, Iowa, giving $100. And then on PayPal, Latrenda, giving $20. So why don't we do this right now? Pastor, just tell them the, the, the ways to give, how they do that, and then we'll just flow, and then we'll turn Dr. Ted loose. I will run over and greet the ladies, and then um, I'll be back. Awesome. But we'll have fun. They'll keep bringing us the, what's happening, and we can read it out. So you are here at a very critical thing. And when you called me, I thought, I, don't, I mean, we can hang out all the time, and I love you. Obviously, we, we're friends for so many years. Um, but I, I just saw you here with me tonight, and I felt... God's going to do something special. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So tell them what they can do, and then you can go to the phones. What we're going to do, we're going to go to the song, the one that we produced for Easter, and we actually emptied the church. We put all the orchestra down, put the choir in the, in the balcony. Pastor Ray sings it, and um, it's phenomenal. And so while that song's playing, you can start giving, and then... We'll get, we'll get ready to turn Dr. Ted loose, and, and then we'll go from there. Pastor Eric, just tell them Amen. what to do. Well, let me, let me catch you up. we leave leaving uh, 13 days from today to Africa. You heard these seven countries and nine cities we're going to. We're going to be gone a month, and uh, the budget is around $2.7 million so that when we go to all these countries, we're able to tell each country this crusade is paid in full. And we've already sent $1.1 million over. So we've already spent one point. That's already paid. Yeah, yeah to all the expenses. And then $400,000 uh, has come in this week. So about, uh, what is that, uh, $1.4 million left. But we're believing for 500000 just through tonight to hit 500000 And there's several different ways to sow seed. So when you call the number and all the different ways to sow seed, that's going into Africa. It's, as you've heard Dr. Rodney say, if you've been watching during the week, this isn't going for the church or for overhead or lights or anything. This is going to Africa. And you'll hear through this broadcast all the things we're doing for these countries in Africa, from the buses to the transportation to many, many, many different things. And uh, so anyways, many different ways to give. We have a few different packages for you. Um, if you sow $10,000 into Africa, you're going to get a signed stewardship Bible from the ministry. This is the new stewardship Bible. It comes in black burgundy, 
uh, black, burgundy, or blue. And it's going to be the signed stewardship edition Bible plus the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing, kingdom business, ways of the wind, and perpetual harvest. That's for a $10,000 seed into the ministry for Africa, a $5,000 love gift, the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing, kingdom business, ways of the wind, and perpetual harvest. And for all of those that are just tuning in, maybe for the first time tonight, Dr. Rodney has never received any royalties off of his books or products. He said, I always wanted to know why I wrote a book. So all of this, of course, goes into the ministry. We're going to send you those books, but this is a seed for Africa. And then $2,500 love gift is a book on revival, ways of the wind, and the Holy Spirit. And for a $1,000 love gift, which, of course, many people can do, the book on revival. Uh, just a couple of the side notes that we'll be talking about tonight. We're running buses, which we'll talk about a little bit later in many of the places. Well, of just mention that before people start giving. Explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. Because to protect the people because of the violence and the crime, where we have to make sure we can get the people from their house to the crusade and back to their house without them being mugged or stabbed or stole. Yes, you know, it's very important. And I don't want people getting murdered coming to a crusade. <laughs> so Exactly. So what we're doing in several places, but if we talk about Cape Town, we're doing this in Madagascar also. But in Cape Town, for the big arena, we're running buses through the entire Cape Town region. And then in the townships or the informal settlements, we're running taxis. And buses and taxis are, are, are running, uh, they're revolving, they're running many, many times. And of course, people don't have transportation like in the townships. Uh, the unemployment is at the lowest 50%, 50, 60, 70%. And crime is very, very high. When the sun goes down at night, you don't go outside. And so if we did not run the buses and the taxis, it would be too dangerous for people to get home. Many people couldn't even get to the crusade, but then when we bring them home in the townships, we're running taxis because the buses can't just drop off at a central location and everybody walk home because it's too dangerous. So believe it or not, this is crazy, but this is what Dr. Ronnie wanted to do because it was the safest thing and the right thing to do. The taxis in the townships are taking people to their homes. I mean, this is really a big deal. So we're running hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of buses and taxis. We had 12,000 requests come in just in Cape Town for rides. This is, this is huge. So really a bus to run revolving like, like a taxi, a bus which will run around three, not around, it's $300 for a bus. And then taxis are $80. But every one of those buses and taxis are attached to a local pastor and a local church. So we have the entire city mapped out. We'll, we'll show you. We have the, every church mapped out. A church adopts a bus route or a taxi route. They put a bus marshal on the bus or the taxi, which is almost like a pastor of the bus or the taxi, so that when those people come to the crusade and get saved or rededicate their life or touched, they're going to form a relationship with them, pray with them, and invite them back for what we call Friendship Sunday, the following Sunday after the crusade, so that they can disciple the people. And many churches will have extreme growth, double, triple. And so for a bus, it's $300. And for a taxi, it's $80. So, you know, we have the, of course, whatever amount the Lord puts on your heart, but the 10,000, 5,000, 2,500, and 1,000, but people could do 750, 500, but for $300, you're sponsoring a bus which has 65 people, African style, maybe 100, but 65 seats in it, and uh, in, in a taxi which, you know, will hold um, a lot of people, you know, um, and so for $80. So what you need to do is go several different ways to sow seed, and you need to do that right now. Let's believe God tonight, on this Thursday night, we go over the half a million mark, over 500,000, and you can sow a seed to Africa. So go to revival.com and click invest now. It'll all be up on your screen, revival.com forward slash giving, revival.com forward slash PayPal. But our phones are open tonight. You can actually call one 855 river sow a seed and do what the Lord's telling you to do. So once again, if you do this, dig, uh, go through revival.com. There's a drop-down box that says Africa. Make sure you click that. Then many of you are watching the service on your cell phone right now. You can text 77977 and put the word give RMI in there. 
You can sow a seed through push pay or text message given right on your phone. Once again, there'll be a drop down box that says Africa. Cash app is dollar sign revival ministries. All of these ways to give, of course, are coming up on the bottom of your screen. And uh, in the memo, please put Africa. It'll be a memo. You can type Africa and then put your first and last name, your ministry name, or your business name. And, uh, so, and then you can mail a love gift in, RMI, P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. But do that now. Go to the phones. Do what the Lord is telling you to do and sow a seed. Yep. Pick up the phone right now. Let's go to the song. We'll be right back, and then we're going to turn our guest loose here tonight. Do that.
Jesus tell you things are moving here this Thursday night very fast already. This is some more Allen from uh, Stouchburg, Pennsylvania, $10. Scott, $400. I'm not sure where you're from, but thank you. Uh, Jim from Sefna, Florida, $170. Don from Medford, Oregon, $300. Mark, $8 from Riverview, Florida. Rebecca, $100 from Safety Harbor, Florida. And then Jonathan, uh, not the one we know, who's fallen on hard times. I'm kidding. $137. <laughs> it's a joke. It's just an inside <laughs> joke. Uh, uh, Talia, $15.61 on Cash App. Faith, $25. Thank you, Faith. La Trenda on PayPal, $20. So people are responding, and uh, we're excited. We believe in God to cross over half a million tonight. And um, thank you for being a part of this special Solathon for Africa and what's about to happen. And six weeks from now, all be history, you'll see the reports and what the Lord's done. So, as I said earlier, honored to have my dear friend here with me, uh, Dr. Ted Shelton, senior, known him many, many years, one of the great evangelists, and uh, really, <laughs> I jokingly say, when you hear him preach, you're not sure which decade you're in because he carries the same fire as what the healing revival has carried in the tent meetings, and he's got a great tent, and they're moving around America, winning souls, many miracles. So tonight, get ready. I believe God's going to give miracles by way of television as well. Dr. Ted, over to you. I'm going to run over and greet the ladies, and I'll be back. Rod Parsley said to me one day, he said, you're a renaissance man. I said, no, I'm a man's man, brother. <laughs> and he said, no, he said, that's like you bring the old to the new. And I never studied much, so some of these words were foreign to me. But I like the way he said it. Amen. But you know, it's the same anointing, same spirit. Everything moves by the power of God. Everything. I was reading a study yesterday. Everything that holds our body together, the little chromosome, looks like a cross. Have you ever seen pictures of it? Everything that holds all the cells together... It looks like a little cross, and it holds our whole body together. Wow. And I love the fact that God has designed us perfectly. So if he took that much care to make you and I, then imagine the care he has for these crusades. The planning, the effort, the logistics, everything that we do is subject to change. But what can't be changed by all the militaries in the world and all the people of the world is the plan of God that is working for the continent of Africa and not just Africa. It's working for every nation of the world, every single nation. God has a plan for every nation. And I want to just first start uh, by saying, and Brother Eric Gagne knows this, that there are ministries and then there are people that their whole life is ministry. And there is a difference. My wife and I were talking about this the other day, and I'm getting ready to start my 49th year full-time traveling and preaching wow. uh, around the world. In the early days, I tried to go to other nations every year. I did that until 1990, and I was coming back from Trinidad, and on the plane, the Lord spoke to me, he said, everything I've taught you since 1974 to 1990, I want you to do that in America. I want you to have miracle meetings in America. And he said, do it just like you did in the nations. Find a field, get a tent, get a large area. And we started doing that in, uh, immediately once God told me to do it. Uh, 1990 till now, and we just finished, Brother Eric, three of the most powerful outdoor crusades that we've done in America ever. Wow. And the interesting thing was, 
the invitations came from the mayors, not churches, not church leaders, the mayors of Atlanta, the mayor of Buffalo, Bobby Brown, a mayor in Parkersburg, and they said, if you'll come, we'll help you. And so that was the first time in all the years I've been preaching where the mayors of cities helped us to set up the meetings. Wow. And did whatever we needed to have done. In Buffalo, there were no permits, no fire marshals, no police. There was nobody. They said, just take the big wow. city park next to the worst uh, area in that city. And we started until the tent was packed and souls were saved. Last year, in our outreaches, God gave us a little over 16,000 souls wow. by actual count, addresses, and every one of them, we put gospel literature for free into their hands in America. So yeah. when Brother Rodney was saying about crusades in stadiums in this nation, that's the next big thing. And I don't believe I'm prophesying. I'm just telling you, it's coming to pass. Because years ago, Brother Rodney prophesied to me at one of our meetings here. He said, first you'll start in tents, then you'll get a bigger tent, then you'll go out into stadiums, and then you'll have huge crusades on fields. And so I'm excited that he's leading the way. Amen. I'm a good <laughs> follower. And uh, we'll find out uh, by the Spirit what we need to do. But I want to say this. God is not done touching America. God's Amen. not done. And so get it out of your mind that the election is going to determine whether America makes it or not. Biden is not your savior. Trump is not your savior. Jesus is the savior of this nation. And so I believe that God has a plan for America that he will bring it to pass and he'll not tarry. Every nation, God has already by his spirit, and that's why I started by saying the spirit is moving all over the world. And that brings us to the prophecy of Joel. When Joel said, in the last days, God said, I will, not I, I might, not maybe, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So the first thing you need to get in your heart and spirit is that God's promise is every person that lives on this planet will feel the power of God. I didn't say they'd all be saved because some will reject it. I didn't say every one of them would be filled with the Holy Ghost because many may not. But everyone, according to the Bible, the last day move of God will be worldwide in scope. It will be unlimited in the visitation in that it's all flesh. And so prophetically, we're coming into the best time that we've ever experienced as the people of God. And so my confession, I remember one time I was in Miami on TBN, and I said to Brother Bank, uh, Bunky, I said, I'm going to steal something from you. He said, what are you going to steal? I said, I'm going to change your saying from Africa shall be saved to America shall be saved. <laughs> he said, please do not steal. Borrow it. Go ahead, borrow it. Amen. <laughs> and then after I said it for three weeks in a row, it was my original statement. Amen. America shall be saved. And so you can see the shift. This is interesting to me because none of this was planned uh, by myself or by Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. But last night, my wife and I went to an Amish restaurant down near Sarasota, not far from where Ankit had a tent up. And while we were waiting in line in front of me, I was drawn to conversation to a gray-headed man in front of me and his wife. And he said, uh, my wife and I just finished 30-some years of ministry in India. I said, I want to talk to you. I got talking to him. He said, I didn't get started until I was 45, 45. And he said, our church, he said, have you ever heard of James Kennedy? I said, of course, evangelism explosion. He said, that was our pastor. 
And my wife and I went to James Kennedy and said, we feel to go do a work in India. So Dr. Kennedy recommended first that they would go to the mission school, William Carey Mission School. And William Carey was a great missionary. So he and his wife at 45 went to the William Carey Missions Institute, it used to be called, to learn what to do. But he said as he sat there, God said, that's too slow. But he learned some things. So he went to India, and in the last 30-plus years, he raised up 30,000 institutes wow. across the nation of India who are training workers even after he left. And he said, if the average school has 100 people, will you do the math? That's 3 million people in India alone that the results of that gray-headed man and his wife accomplished by faith, gave up their business, gave up everything here at 45 to follow the plan of God. And so I say, well, I feel the anointing as I'm saying this. God has a plan for every life that is somehow connected to the winning of the lost. You that are in the studio, you that are watching, there is a supernatural plan that God is working for you and through you. And if that little gray-headed man and his wife could raise up 30,000 uh, institutes across the nation of India, then imagine what God will do through everybody in the body of Christ. Who said we're leaving anybody for the Antichrist? If we leave anybody, we'll leave a, a handful is what I'm believing. I'm believing for a mass uh, outpouring of the Spirit, as I started this with, for it will be worldwide in scope. But I'm also believing in a mighty harvest. And I'll use this verse again in a little bit. But in the book of Amos, the prophet, most prophecies have a twofold fulfillment. One that's in the immediate, the other that is a long-range view of the Holy Spirit. And so the first time is of the, uh, is the natural realm. Like Adam, the first Adam was of the earth earthy. So in God's workings of revelation, the first thing he gives you is uh, natural. But the second time is always spiritual. The last Adam was the quickening spirit. That's Jesus. The first Saul, uh, he died and committed suicide. But the second Saul became Paul and wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Everybody say the second time is spiritual. Second the first Adam was of the earth earthy, but the last Adam was the spirit. The second time is spiritual. The first crossing of Jordan with Elijah and Elisha was the fulfillment of the finalization of Elijah's ministry. But Elisha said, I pray thee a double portion of thy spirit. And Elijah said, thou hast asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I go away, then you shall receive what you have asked. And so the fate crossed over the first time for Elisha, the sons of the prophets stood nearby on the hillside, mocking, go up thou bald head, making fun of the prophet Elijah. But Elisha said, wherever you go, I'm going to go. They got to the other side, and there came a whirlwind out of heaven, and chariots of fire, and horses of fire. God's transportation is powerful. A lot of what people are seeing, what they're calling UFOs, some of them are angels from heaven because the Bible says there'd be signs in the heavens and signs in the earth before Jesus comes. Huh? Someone said, what if an alien came over and shook your hand? I'd say, in the name of Jesus, you devil, come out. Amen. Because <laughs> I know that God has a plan. Can you say amen? And I'm very, very excited about what God's doing through Rodney Har Brown's ministry. But folks, the second time is spiritual. 
So when I woke up this morning, I was praying, and I saw myself actually just almost like this. I even asked the fellow, I said, put this on this side. He said, it looks better for TV if it's here. I'm doing exactly what I saw when I prayed this morning. <laughs> it was here. It wasn't here. Here's the black table. I didn't know. Everything was black uh, around me. And I, I, I told my wife uh, what I saw and what God was saying. Now, all the plan was in the natural. The natural. Everybody say natural. Natural. In other words, we make plans. It's all right to use your mind. I go left at this light. I go right at this light. Although I've noticed some have lost their mind here in Florida. <laughs> Put the signal on this way and they go that way. I just saw that. That was wonderful. And uh, misdirection. But uh, what I'm saying is I woke up yesterday around 5 some. This morning again, a little after 6, just the spirit of prayer has been coming on me. And um, <clears throat> I'm not only getting ready to start my 49th year full-time traveling, but it, shortly uh, I'll enter into my 70th year of living. And my wife doesn't like me to say that, but she was just a mere child when I married her. So don't feel bad about her age. She's young. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I should tell the story. I came down one time. Brother Rodney had that prophet from South Africa. Maybe, maybe you remember this. And he came up and he said to Brother Rodney, can I prophesy to Brother Ted? And uh, Brother Rodney just kind of grinned and shook his head yes, but he knew him. And he said to me, the guy come over and prophesy. He said, uh, God's going to take 20 years off of your life. I thought, I want to live longer than that. Amen. And he said it again. And then he said, you shall run like a young stallion. And he said, what's your age now? And I told him. He said, minus 20. You're actually the younger age now. So uh, I'm not 102, but I'm doing good. <laughs> Glory to God. And afterwards, I said to Rodney, are you sure? Uh, he's a, a prophet. And then I told my wife she wasn't here. She said, what about someone setting my age back? Amen. <laughs> so I laid hands on her and set it back myself. Glory to God, because I'm not living with an old woman. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> but everybody say this out loud. I'll help you to remember it. The second time, the second time is spiritual. Is spiritual. And so recently, Brother Rodney and the crew went to Africa and did all that God had them to do. And then when he called and told me he was getting ready to do it again, my first thought was, man, that's pretty soon. You were just there. You're going again. And as soon as I had that thought, the Lord said to me, the second time is spiritual. Wow. This time is a spiritual, God-appointed, and, of course, God-anointed journey of faith. Every minister I've ever known that's done anything for God has an experience where they have to look back and say, God told me to do it, God made it happen, and everything came to pass. Amen. That's what I say over these meetings that Brother Eric, Jennifer, all of them that work so hard, I'm just telling you it shall come to pass. There is no doubt in my mind that we're living right at the end of days. I mean moments away from the return of Jesus Christ. In January of this year, at the University of uh, Chicago, in Chicago, Illinois, they have what's called the doomsday clock. Are you familiar with that, Brother Eric? Yes. And whenever they feel like we're close to some kind of a nuclear event or problem, they change the hands on the clock. Originally, they were about three minutes from midnight. But this year, they said we're 80 seconds. And then I heard they changed it again and that we're one minute away from destruction in the minds of natural men. I want you to hear what I'm about to say. The world knows something's wrong, but they don't know what it is. On social media, I saw a uh, poll and it was taken from all across the platforms. What is the number one thing that people are commenting on? I used to say tweet, now they're Xing. 
<laughs> what is the number one thing? It was interesting. They said the category could be under one word, dread. Dread. People are in a fearful state. Now, why is that? Well, if God is not the author of confusion, and he's not, and if God has not given us the spirit of fear, and he has not, then the devil is working overtime to put fear in the hearts of men and women. Now, think of this. But the church should not fear anything. Amen. We should not fear one thing. We should not fear anything. For you and I that have faith, the cure to fear and unbelief, the opposite is faith. Yes. And uh, one time I was here when the pavilion was just the field before you put the, the uh, structure up, and Jesse DePlanis was preaching. First time I ever saw a preacher preaching tennis shoes. I'd seen Brother Rodney preaching soccer shoes, but never <laughs> tennis shoes. But he got preaching, and he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, fear is false evidence appearing real. I don't remember the rest of what he preached. I couldn't even tell you. I'm just telling you, fear is not of God, and it's based upon things that may never happen. It was Spurgeon that said in one of his sermons, fear is interest on the trouble you may never have. Wow. When you have fear, then you're giving a place for the devil to bring his plan to pass. And so the second area I want to talk to you about is God's plan is going to undo the devil's plan. When the devil has a strategy designed against you, heaven will give you a strategy to help you sidestep the strategies of the devil so that his plans will not come to pass, but God's plan will always come to pass. Amen. A lot of times you hear me say, it shall all come to pass, for God is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Recently, I have been dismayed to hear messages by preachers. It's almost like they got vaccinated with unbelief, and yeah. the booster shot was doubt, <laughs> and the third shot's going to take them out. I'm talking about when you preach or speak anything, that there's something in this Bible that is the opposite of what you're saying. I must doubt that kind of preaching. But believe this Bible. Paul said to Timothy, and under this point, this is very important. In T Timothy was like his son in the gospel. And we all know Brother Rodney's a lot older than I am. I feel like I'm his son in the gospel. Actually, I'm older than him. But anyhow, I would say this to you, as Paul did to Timothy. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. The fight of faith is the one fight the devil can never win. And the fight of faith is the one fight that the child of God always wins. Amen. We always win. Amen. This Amen. will be a successful meeting. What if God, in his great knowledge and wisdom, in the storehouse, in that great storehouse of God's knowledge, he sees the military saying, we're going to lock the whole continent of Africa down. But God says, I'm going to bring you to a place where a man carries the anointing. And when he comes to the place you're planning on staying, he shall open up the windows of heaven over that nation, declares the Lord, and release the power of God for God always uses a vessel. And there will come confusion in the ranks of the enemy. And there will come a great turning around by the power of the Holy Ghost. And there shall be no lockdown, declares the Lord. Neither shall there be any theft 
of minerals, of the blessings that God put in the continent of Africa. I didn't know I was going to be speaking like this this week, but about five days ago, I studied the continent of Africa. Your maps, the globes that people make, Africa is actually way larger than what they put on the globes and the maps. It is, by actual measurement, larger than Europe and parts of uh, uh, Scandinavia and uh, down through France and the Levantine states. Africa is larger right across that area than the combined kilometers of that landmass. Africa is, uh, I think I read, five times larger than the United States, including Alaska. Alaska's uh, pretty big all by itself. But if you combine Alaska, Hawaii, and the United States, then Africa as a continent is many times larger than that. But if you added up the landmass of every continent, including Antarctica, Africa is still larger than the additional landmass of every other continent. Wow. It is a big place. Are you listening to me? I'm trying to tell you that God has something big for the continent of Africa. Amen. Just one nation, Angola, has enough arable land by arable for farming. It could feed 60% of the continent of Africa. One wow. nation could because of the arable land that is present. 33% of the diamonds of the world are coming from Africa. You go through all of the figures, and Africa, the continent, is a treasure house, not of what we would call commodities, not of what we would call wealth. It is a treasure trove of souls. And per capita, there are more Africans born again than there are in Europe and the United States combined. Wow. Are you listening to me? And as Pastor Rodney said, China is making its moves towards Africa. And so this second point, this second trip to Africa is spiritual. The first, look at it as God setting Rodney Howard Brown Ministries up for the second one, which is spiritual. It shall grow it shall be powerful, and it's not a coincidence, as I said, that these armies are being gathered in Lesotho. Where was it again? In Livingston, Zambia. Yeah, in Zambia. It's not a coincidence. God knew that, and he put it in the heart of the man of God, be there that I can open the window of heaven and, and flow through a vessel that will release such an anointing. Now, remember this. There's a substance to the anointing. Some people forget that. There's an actual substance to the anointing. When God releases it, that substance, because God is eternal in his habitation, that substance never goes away. Every time you get anointed, the substance in the anointing stays in your body. Every time the Spirit of God comes upon you, the substance is deposited and it stays in you. For example, Elisha, when he crossed over, he said, I want a double portion of your ministry. Elijah had eight miracles, but when Elisha died, he only had 15. But when there was a battle some years later, and they took the dead body of the soldier, threw it on the grave, the only thing in the grave was the bones of Elisha. But when the soldier's dead body touched it, the substance or the anointing in the bones of Elisha raised the soldier from the dead, miracle number 16. Everybody say the second time, the second time. is spiritual. And so you that are watching, you that are here in the studio, I'm telling you this is perhaps one of the greatest missionary journeys of faith that Brother Rodney Howard Brown has ever done. And as a result, there are things God has planned that he doesn't even know what's going to happen yet. All he knows is he's going to go. The windows of heaven are going to open up. The Spirit of God in him is going to be stirred up. 
and a substance is going to be poured out of heaven by the Holy Ghost upon those nations, and that substance cannot be removed. It shall remain. God, who is eternal in his habitation, shall cause that substance to begin to permeate every nation, everywhere that the foot of the man of God goes everywhere he walks that becomes a part of the kingdom of God by impartation of the Holy Ghost and by the deposit of a substance that cannot be erased God is going to put a mark on Africa that no devil will ever remove hallelujah God is going to put a mark on these nations as our brother goes by faith it will not be removed it shall be marked Marked. Hallelujah. And just like there's the mark of the beast, there's the mark of God. Hallelujah. And God is on the move, and God is marking nations, and the last outpouring will come upon those that have received the mark of God. Amen. I believe that. Yeah. So if you're watching, if you're here, what would be the reason why you couldn't sow a seed? Why can't you sow a big seed. If Jesus comes, as soon as they get back, no sense holding on to the money. <laughs> but God has a plan. Now, here's what God gave me in prayer. I want to give it to you. It's in James 5, and it's a prophecy. The book of James is interesting. Someone said, who wrote it? James the less? Uh, James the brother of Jesus? Je and they went through all the Jameses, and I said, all I know is James wrote it. Amen. <laughs> when you get to heaven, figure it out. Interview all of them. They'll come clean. They'll tell you which one did it. Amen. But the fifth chapter is powerful. It starts out with prophecy about money, and it finishes with an encouragement for healing. Now, let me say that again. And this is what God gave me. I actually saw this in a vision. And I knew I was reading from this passage. He was sitting there. I knew we were going to wear ties and suits because in the vision. And pretty much it looks the same, maroon. Amen. If I had more money, I'd have a pocket handkerchief when I get older. <laughs> but uh, my wife keeps using them for the grandkids to blow their nose. <laughs> but I heard myself doing this. This is what is so wonderful to me. This was not planned. This is just something the Holy Ghost wanted us to do. I'm believing God for $1 million to come in. And that's what I heard in my spirit. Not only that, I heard the Lord say and ask me to bring in a million into the church while our brother's laboring. So I'm believing God for a double portion, a double portion, that nothing shall have lack, but there shall be blessing in every realm and area, Brother Rodney. And I heard myself say this, the prophecy, I heard crying. And then I said, Lord, what is this crying? He said, it's people that are being oppressed by evil, rich people. And I immediately thought of James 5. I saw this. And so I went and read it earlier. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries. That shall come upon you. Let me stop and say, many evil rich people have made their wealth off the back of the working man. And as a result, they were sowing seeds, the Bible calls it evil, and misery. They go together. And finally, the Bible says, your riches are corrupted, and your garments are are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Now notice this. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Now, granted, you could say it's the last days of their life before they die. But if you go through the rest of the chapter, the last days is pinpointed by James in this prophecy when he says this, Be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. So the last days in James 5 
is being referred to right before the coming of the Lord. Now, you that are watching across the network, you that are here, picture this in your mind. I'll use this mic stand. Let's say this holder represents the coming of the Lord. And then what you have is a timeline, God's timeline. This here represents the first coming of Jesus. Then in 33 AD, after he went to heaven, the birth of the church. You just come down the timeline. 70 AD, Titus invades Jerusalem. It's destroyed. The Jews are dispersed. May 1946, Israel is reborn as a nation. It's not Palestine, it's Israel. And then you come on down the line, June 22nd, 2022, ratified on June 26th. The three nations of Ezekiel 37, 38, 39 formed an alliance, Russia, Iran, Turkey. It was prophesied thousands of years ago by Ezekiel. It just happened in 2022. And then it says the coming of the Lord. Now, what I'm trying to say is on God's timeline, there's not as much time left before the return of the Lord and where we are prophetically. So the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, there's not as much time left for prayers to be answered. There's not as much time left for your financial giving to multiply and come back to you as a harvest, which then tells us there's an acceleration, a prophetic acceleration that's working right now. Prayers will be answered more quickly. When you give to God's work, your harvest will come more quickly. I want you to get this. This is key. One reason I would encourage you to give right now is because you're going to get a quick harvest because of where we are prophetically on God's timeline. We don't have as much time as we used to have. How many see what I'm saying? Yes. Literally, Jesus could come at any moment for the church. That's when he comes for his saints. But then the Bible says in Jude, the Lord cometh with 10,000s of his saints back to this earth to rule and reign. Brother Rodney, I just felt to say this to you. I didn't know what you said. I'm glad you told me. I, I, I began to pray about China. The word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord said to me, China has plans for all the nations for dominion. But I have a plan for China. And I prayed. We were, this was during the fast. And the Lord said to me, he said, I'm sending a mighty Holy Ghost revival to the nation of China. It will bring in so many souls that the government will take their eyes off of other nations. And I heard him say Taiwan. And he said they'll have to look at their own nation to see what is this phenomenon where our people are suddenly becoming very religious. And Jesus is already visiting China with the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I heard the Lord say right after that, and the United Nations, that habitation of devils, declares the Lord, it shall move to Europe. And you'll get in your news, they're moving the body, the world body to Europe. When you hear that, declares the Lord, then America shall have one more visitation, probably in stadiums, with someone that didn't want to do it. You watch and see. God will have somebody. But I'm telling you, God's not done with this world. He's not done with this nation. Our hope is not in politics. Our hope is in the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. And so tonight, I want you to pray because as we see these things, I believe God gave me a plan that I've been telling my partners and friends. And that is you need to learn how. Where's the camera? Right here. You need to learn how to give an offering of faith. You need to do it tonight. You need to hear what I'm saying. What is an offering of faith? I was praying, and my wife will tell you, I came to her, I said, I don't understand it. But the Lord said there's a way to put a wall of protection around our property and our finances and our grandchildren, our children. And I said, he told me this, but I don't know what it means. He said, if you'll give an offering of faith, then I'll build a wall of protection around 
everything that belongs to you. So I prayed again. We fasted. My wife and I fasted together, prayed. And the Lord said, what is an act of faith? What is an offering of faith? It's when you do something that in the natural, you don't know how you can do it. Literally, an offering of faith is when you give God an offering that in the natural, you can't afford to give it. But when you give it, it unlocks, because of the prophetic timeline, a quick harvest. And then the Lord took me to Amos, the ninth chapter, about the prophetic time, the second part of Amos, which is the plowman shall overtake the reapers. Something's going to pick up speed. Can you imagine those fields? Big heaps of wheat or corn or whatever it is. And as they're stacking them up in piles, here comes the plowman. Let's do it again. And it's a perpetual harvest that Amos prophesied. I prophesy to every one of you watching. Is this my camera? Every one of you that are watching, I prophesy. If you'll give tonight an offering of faith, something in the natural, you can't afford to give it. Then God, then God will bless you because now you've moved from natural giving, which is the, that which is of the natural, to the second time or the spiritual, which brings the greater blessing, an offering of faith. And Brother Rodney, I'm just telling you that I came prepared in, in the natural for different reasons. I'm only doing one meeting a month right now. I'm taking care of my dear mother's business. Bonnie's father just went to heaven as well. A lot goes on with all of that. But I couldn't stop preaching. And every meeting where I've gone has gone on. And we've gone two weeks instead of one and so forth. Multiplied hundreds saved. Thank God for that. But what I'm telling you is God and his plan sent me here tonight to tell you that if you'll take the challenge... I don't care what nation you're in. In a minute, Brother Eric will tell you again how to give, Brother Pastor Rodney, but Brother Rodney, an offering of faith, the people will give. So my wife and I, we're going to be one of those that give uh, that amount that you said, but you don't have to sign a Bible or anything. You already gave me one. Yeah. But I'm going to be the first one, so that changes it to 430 wow. instead of 420. Wow. And... If we I just, sit here long enough, I might get convicted and <laughs> give some of my wife's money next. Amen. <laughs> well, it already clocked up. It was from 419 to 420. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Ted. Thank you. God bless you. I believe you're going to see a quick harvest come in. Amen. Yeah. Here's a $1,000 pledge coming from Denver, Colorado, and then Vicki from Middletown, Indiana, $50, and then on PayPal, $10 from Hannah, New Dimensions Christian Outreach, $27, and Jordell, $150. So the calls are coming in, and they're going to pick up. Pastor Eric, you want to tell them what to do? And then right after that, we're going to go to a song, which you love this one. I started reviving a lot of the songs that People don't sing anymore. And, of course, I was really touched by Andre. I'm Andre, doing the same thing. Andre Crouch's ministry from the 70s. Yeah. You know, Andre Crouch live in London, Carnegie Hall. And there's a song called Tell Them, yeah. even if they don't believe it. But we, we, have, we have the exact sound that Andre Crouch and the disciples had. So I'm excited about it. It takes me right back to when I was a teenager. And so we're going to do that while the people give past Eric, tell them what to do, and then go to the phones. And, well, go to the phones. Go to the, go to the phone. The phone is right there. Just go to the phone. Just pick your phone up. And, you know, it's not like, oh, I need to go to the phone. The phone is there. Do it. Teach your thumb to do the action. Okay. Pass here. Hallelujah. Well, you heard Brother Ted, an offering of faith. Ask the Lord, what is an offering of faith? What's an offering of faith the Lord's speaking to you to do? And do that right now. We have different packages for you. A $10,000 love gift to Africa. This is for Africa. Uh, we'll get the signed stewardship Bible in black, burgundy, or blue. 
uh, is an awesome, and he'll put the picture up for that, awesome Bible, King James or Amplified, the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing, kingdom business, the ways of the wind, and perpetual harvest. This goes towards Africa. We're believing God tonight to go over 500,000. The budget is actually 2.7 million for these seven countries and nine cities in Africa. And uh, so go to revival.com, click invest now, do what the Lord's telling you to do. That's for a $10,000 love gift, $5,000 love gift, the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing king of business, the ways of the wind and perpetual harvest. And of course, this goes towards the budget of Africa. And then a $2,500 love gift is the, the book on revival, ways of the wind and the Holy Spirit. And a $1,000 love gift the book on revival. Of course, any gift that the Lord speaks to you about to do, do that. Maybe you can't do those. Maybe you can do what he tells you to do. Maybe you can do 750 or 500 or 300. We keep telling you the buses are $300 to run people to the meetings and back. Maybe $100. Taxis are $80. You could fill a whole taxi, which holds about 15, 20 people, depending on where you're at, do what the Lord is telling you to do. So go to revival.com, click invest now. Uh, also revival.com forward slash giving, revival.com forward slash PayPal. You'll see all the different ways to give on the bottom of the screen, but do that now. Do that now. And then you can also give through text message, give in text 77977, give RMI. You can do that right through your cell phone. It's real easy. Cash app is dollar sign revival ministries. And in the memo, in all these electronic ways, please click Africa. And also you can call one 85 river We have prayer operators ready to, ready to take uh, the, uh, the love gift and, you, you, and pray for you at the same time so you can call the number. And then also you can mail a love gift in to RMI, P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. All these different ways are coming up on your screen and you can sow a seed. So call the number right now, text, email, whatever you do, call right now. And as you heard, an offering of faith. Hallelujah. That was 33 buses that I wanted to help you with. <laughs> yes. Doing a quick calculation. <laughs> you know, an offering of faith really is a challenge because I've had God do this to me before, not really knowing what he was doing years ago. Twice in my life, God told me to give everything I had away. But every time I did, I ended up with more by the end of that year. Wow. And my wife and I lived in a car for eight years. We didn't have an apartment or a home. And finally, we got $400 ahead. And I was in a meeting, and God said, give all your money to Lester Sumrall. I said, Lord, have you seen his house here and his church and cars and TV studios? But I did it. I obeyed. And Brother Sumrall just started weeping. The Lord showed him what it was. And uh, he did something money couldn't buy. He laid hands on me. He said, as Wigglesworth blessed me, I bless you wow. with tears. And so sometimes when God puts his finger on something, there's something that's even greater than the financial harvest connected to that offering of faith. And I'm not saying you can buy your healing or buy an anointing. No, you cannot. But I do believe if you obey the Holy Spirit, when he puts his finger on you, giving an offering of faith, on the other side of it is more than just finances. And yes, finances will come in. But I, it's just I've seen it for years how God blesses people. It's wonderful. So, Brother Ted, obviously you give the 10000 and you already have the Bible. You have the book on uh, the anointing, the one on Jesus. And you got the business, king the business, and perpetual office. But you don't have this, uh, the ways of the wind, revival, and the Holy Spirit. I've signed the ball for you. Thank so, you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm making and, and a point. I repent for rebranding one of the 57 cows with my uh, <laughs> brand. Amen. <laughs> I give the cow back. <laughs> you know, he, he showed me how he brands. That's wonderful. <laughs> Amen. So Donnie's bringing the cow back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's go to the song. Tell them, call the numbers on the screen. Let's see, we're at 431 already. Come on. Tonight's the night. We're moving this thing. Over 500,000. Come on. Hallelujah. 431. Amen. Keep going. Oh.
As you continue to give, we're going to go to another song, which I'll tell you in just about Brother Ted and Sister Bonnie just gave us a check, uh, $10,000, and this is for Africa. So thank you. And I want you to just stretch your hand, those that are here. Let's pray over them and the ministry. Father, thank you for this precious man and his wife and all the years that you've used him. And I thank you that even as he's preached tonight, cause this to be a double blessing and a mighty harvest in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord. You know exactly what you have. The assignment upon his life and ministry, and Lord, with this tent and everything that you planned this year, it shall be, it shall be, it shall be a quickening by your mighty hand, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, just thank him right Hallelujah. now. We'll do that. And then here's a song that is written by uh, Jimmy and Becky Pierce called Lord of All. I love the song, and I revived it. We did it in the early days of the River Church, but I bring back many songs that people don't even sing anymore. So let's do Lord of All, because he is Lord of All. Amen. Let's roll it.
Hallelujah. I love that song, I tell you. So just continue to give. Call the numbers on the screen, all the ways to give. You got you the old snail mail way of writing out a check, but you guys wrote a check. It wasn't a snail. It came quickly. It was right <laughs> over there. Sister Bonnie ran to get the check, and she wrote it and brought it. So there wasn't the snail mail way. But write out a check to Revival Ministries in Nashville, P.O. Box 292888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. Or you can text give RMI 77977. Or go to revival.com forward slash giving. Right. And or there's a drop down box, say everything about Africa, and you can do PayPal, you can do Cash App, you can do uh, all the ways to give. I mean, did I miss anything? No, that's okay. about so it. So basically, we, we even take Bitcoin. So if you want to <laughs> get Bitcoin, and um, anyway, but yeah, the calls are coming in. This one is $100 coming from a place called Garner, North Carolina. Thank you, Janet. Yes, Arthur Herrera calling from California. Thank you, dear brother. $30. Thank you so much. Then Lisa from Albion, New York, $1,000. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Cynthia, $4 from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Mark, $20 from Sefna, Florida. Darwin, $500 from Albuquerque, New Mexico which I'm going to be coming there on the 300 city tour. We just haven't locked that in yet. And then Marie, $60 from Thermopolis, Wyoming. Oh, I didn't know there's a place called Thermopolis. Is that named after some Greek thing? <laughs> I now name this town Thermopolis. <laughs> anyway, Richard, $80. I'm not sure where you're from, but thank you, Derek. $20 from Trevor, Wisconsin. Trevor, Wisconsin. David, $20. Again, from I don't know who you are. I mean, from where you are, but thank you, David. Kelly, from $50 from Flint, Michigan. And uh, pray you're drinking pure water. And then Tyler from <laughs> Vanilla's Park, $20. Thank you. Nelia on Cash App, $25. Ryan, $5. Jeremy, $15. And then on PayPal, Elijah, $5. Thank you for your giving. And we just crossed over 434000 So they're coming in. Just you go to the phones. Go to the phones. And... So we see right now, we're going to do another song. This one is also another Andre Crouch number that I really loved. And, of course, I hadn't heard it for a time. And the Lord said, bring back these songs because they've been buried for what reason? You know, everyone wants a new song, but I love these songs. And this one's called, I just want to take a little time and thank the Lord for what he's done for me. So we're going to do that right now. Keep calling. Do it now. Go for it.
Clifton. Yeah, so it's rolling in. I think we just clocked up to 4.36. So I believe when we started tonight, we were 4.19. So 17 is already coming. Just keep giving because we are, um, well, we go off the air, what, 11 o'clock? Yes, sir. So we've got what left. And we pick up new people too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, people are clicking through the channel, so. Because um, I, I would like to, at some point, for you that are fresh, stay tuned. I want to give that word again for the new crowd that's coming on. Yes, sir. About an offering of faith. And in simple form, an offering of faith is when you give God something that in the natural, you can't afford to give it. If you give it and you say, I can do this, there's no faith in it. But when you give God something you don't think you can afford, that's when you get over in the realm of the supernatural, where the second time is spiritual. I'll say more about it later. But start praying about giving God an offering of faith tonight. Not waiting. I feel like tonight's the night. For you that may not know who I am, uh, I've been a friend with Brother Rodney for years. But I promise you, I didn't know I was going to be here tonight. But when I woke up this morning quite early, I, s I had a small what I call vision. I saw Brother Rodney standing to my left as we're sitting this way. I saw something black behind us. Everything looked black. I saw his tie, his uh, handkerchief, and I heard myself teaching on giving. And so I talked to my wife. I said, as far as I know, we're just going to go up and maybe grab lunch at noon. But as it worked out, he gave us this invitation. I didn't know, he, didn't know he would do it. We moved things around from today that we did. Others will do tomorrow. God wanted me to be here tonight to stand with my brother and to challenge you. What are we waiting for? Let's go after souls while there's still time. And there's no way you ever lose when you give. When you give, and especially if you're giving an offering of faith, I believe there are things that happen based on 2 Corinthians 9, but one, he'll multiply what you do. It'll be multiplied. Not only that, he'll give more seed because you're a sower. And then the Bible says he'll increase you, increase the fruit of your giving, your righteousness. And as you know, in the Bible, the word seed is only used in two conjunction uh, measures. One in Mark 4, it means the word. And in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, it means money. And the word and finances are linked together. And the spirit of mammon is not the same thing as mammon. Mammon is the facilities that we use in the world of money, so forth. The spirit of mammon is the devil that gets in and tries to use it to bind, destroy, and steal. It's the spirit of mammon that we bind. But Jesus said, make friends with mammon. Or in other words, make that money. Be just like uh, a facilitator for whatever you need it for but especially for the gospel and I believe there's untold riches yet to be released this year I see it I saw it as like a, a farmer from Amos 9 bringing in the harvest I've worked in harvest fields and it gets so they, they heap they build a, a, a pile they call it a heap of wheat or they, a shock of wheat and they just they keep going down the field the Bible gives us the picture in Amos 9 that while that's going on, right behind comes those that are the plowmen. And they'll get so uh, that the plowmen will overtake the reapers because seed, think what a plowman does. That's the sowing of seed. The sowing of seed will become greater than the harvest. And the harvest then become greater through multiplication. But it speaks of an acceleration the word picture there in Amos 9, things are picking up pace, speed. And I'm believing God that if we need a rocket ship to send Brother Rodney Hart Brown around the world to cut his travel time down to 20 minutes, then may yeah. God give him one. Amen. Amen. I saw these new, uh, have you seen the new hypersonic planes they're working yes. on? You can leave New York City and land in London uh, 18 minutes later. <laughs> God give Brother Rodney many hypersonic aircraft. Hallelujah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Let's let's do this. Let's play the clip 
of the seven countries that we're going to. And then we'll go from that. Let's go straight into another unrecrashed one called Perfect Peaks. Continue to give, and we'll be right back. Then Dr. Ted is going to share again with you. Roll it, please. The Lord said to me, run to the nations. I came to light a fire. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, you're going to win souls and you're going to bring in the harvest of souls. You have to get the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got a burn on the inside of you. So we're going to see the harvest come in. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not going to have my country. You're not going to have my nation. The whole of Africa is going to be shaken by the hand of God. I see Africa ablaze.
Hallelujah. Yeah, just continue to give. I want to do one more song, and then we'll go to Brother Ted. I believe we've got, what, two hours left here from nine to, is it right? Two yeah. hours left on the show. Yes. Um, I mean, I've been around so long I can't even count. <laughs> but, um, okay, let's just run through the ways here. I believe God's being the people here, so a gift of 10,000. Others can so 5,000 or 2,500 or 1,000 or 500 or 300 or 100 or 50. Everybody can do something here tonight. And I know Dr. Ted's going to share something with you. This is important. This is not to pay bills. Everything's paid. We pay cash for everything. We're not behind on anything. We're not even doing this to pay bills. This is for Africa, something where you pay a bill. We are paying for everything before we get there so that when we get there, everything's paid. That's what we did on the last trip when we went to Africa, and I felt the Lord say, do it now. And um, so this is very important. We're already hearing such great testimonies coming out of, even today I heard of what the latest report from Kenya when we were there. But perhaps, Eric, before you tell that, um, I believe everybody can do something, at least for the buses, because $300 for a bus, which is very important. Do you want to put the slide up from where what we already have? Are they able to do that? Of the, of the map? Of the buses? Yeah, yeah. Sure. So let's put that up if we can. And then just talk a little bit about that and then tell the people how to give. And there might be somebody watching, right? So I want to give $100,000. Or somebody said, I'm going to give a million dollars. Brother Ted spoke about that earlier. And I actually said, if, if somebody sows a million dollars, we'll fly you to Africa. And you can be in that crusade with us. Um, which we don't ever do anything like that because you can't, we can't hold people around the, the world. And then suddenly they want this demand, that demand. And we can't babysit. We're not going on a holiday. We're going there to light a fire. So, which is very important. We just crossed over 437,000, so another 1,000 up. Thank you. Continue to give. Pastor Eric, if, you, if you'll do that right there. Amen. Well, we're going into Cape Town, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, April 19th, 20th, and 21st. And I have the computer here. We're going to put the map up. And we're running buses. Well, before they put the map up, just put the stadium, the fly thing of the stadium, and then right after they put the map up so you can see why we're doing this. Put the stadium fly through that we shot with our own drone. The fly through stadium. There it is. It took a while. That's the only stadium available in the nation. Uh, and in Cape Town, there's another one that's uh, like 50,000, but they, the turf is so holy, they don't want anybody using the turf. So now, but the key to that stadium that we have, we see 30,000, and we already have, um, as of this morning, these are people that went to, what's it called, click it? Quick it. Quick it. Oh, I knew it was something, it. And basically, what you do is you go and you get a ticket at Cricket, and it's a, normally they pay for it, but for us, it's all free. And so right now, we've got 99,025 that have tickets. But the problem is not just the stadium, because where the meetings are, people have to come through townships and settlements. There's so much unrest. People are shooting each other. It's ridiculous. So I felt... It would devastate me if I went to do a so many crusade and then people get killed because they can't get back home at night. So what we've done is secure buses and taxis, and we're paying for that. I've never heard of any ministry doing this. They just don't. And they, people find their own way there. But the, what we've done, there's actually a method in what we're doing. Each church 
will have assigned buses that we pay for, and there will be a representative of the church on the bus bringing people. So not only do we win the souls, but they have an ability to follow up on all those people going back to their neighborhood. Isn't that right, Brother That's, that's exactly right. So I'm excited about this. I mean, I feel that this is a more secure way. Not only will we give the altar call, so you say you've got 30,000 in the stadium, there'll be nights of four, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 people come forward. Now they're standing around the altar. We lead them to Christ. Then we pray for them to be set free. Then we get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. And there'll be miracles, something, and devils coming out, and everything we do, because we're Pentecostal. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm a Pentecostal. I believe in the book of Acts. And then right at the end of that, we will then each one, we've just printed 100,000 um, of our book called What It Means to Be Born Again. In the back of the book will be a serrated decision card, which we will fill out. Everything will be filled out. It'll be torn off, and we will keep that, and they'll be dispersed amongst the pastors. However, there's a gospel soul winning script in it, and they will train them how to win souls that on the way home and the next day, they're going to lead people to Jesus. So imagine you get 7,000 people saved, and everybody the next day is praying with three or four or five other people. Suddenly, the mass crusade is now multiplied, and, and we're going to commission them to get souls saved, and we're going to commission them to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils. So you can't have a three-day meeting like that and what we'll do, too, everybody in the stadium will be mobilized as well. So that's 30,000 people leaving there, praying for the sick, praying for people to get saved. You're looking, if there's 90,000 different people coming through, in, in a matter of a week, there's a saturation all throughout the city of Cape Town. Now, you'll see how widespread this is, and these are already churches that have already committed to buses and people that are already signing up in the churches. So over to you. Let's show the map, and you don't have to zoom in close because I don't know what. But look at this map. This is already people. We are now uh, how far from the city of Cape Town? I mean, well, Friday is four weeks away. Four weeks. Okay, we're four weeks away. Plus, we just had an apostle with us this last Sunday. He flew back Monday, and he hadn't even started. And he has churches all across Cape Town. And he said, "I'm going back to mobilize all my people." So, if we have ninety-nine thousand, just with what he's doing, is another thirty thousand. So, I, I, I mean, I'm already. We don't have a, we don't have room in the inn, but it's a good problem to have because of what's going to take place. So, Pastor Eric, over to you. So, as we look at this map, what you need to see is the orange, the orange circles are buses. Remember, an orange circle could have 10, 50, 60 buses attached to it. That's attached to churches. The, the blue circles are taxis, and then the green are churches that have their own transportation. So if I just click on one, just like here's Bread of Life, if I click on this real quick and I look, this uh, 30 people committed and they need two taxis. So when we go to this map, if I click on any one of these, it'll pull up the pastor's name, their information, how many people are committed for buses. So this is really a, a strategic way that we're mapping everything out. So when a church comes on board, it becomes a supportive church. They fill out a form and then we go to it and then we get commitments for a bus marshal, how many buses or taxis they need. And uh, this, is, this goes very far. Uh, you, you can see, if you go up the map to the, the town of Paul, and then if you come down on the bottom area here, that's Gordon's Bay. I think, is it Gordon's Bay? What is that? It's Gordon's Bay. Yeah, Gordon's Bay. Yeah, yes, sir. Gordon's Bay. And then if you go up on the left hand, uh, so come all the way down the peninsula. Yeah. Oh, wow. Even down there. And look down at the bottom here. I mean, what is that? Just, just zoom in there. Yeah, this is Hermanus. Hermanus. Right there. Do you know how far away that is? <laughs> Folks, people are coming from all every, listen, what's so amazing about this, all the pastors on the ground said, for the first time, we've got all the races coming together. 
It's not like just a white meeting or a, a colored meeting, which is not a racial term. There's a whole group of people called the coloreds. You do not call them blacks. If you do, you insult them greatly. And then we have the Africans, which are divided into many different tribes because there's a lot of tribal people. You have the Tosa, you have the Zulu, you have other African tribes. And then also we have a lot of Zimbabweans and Nigerians, and we've got Congolese, we've got people from Ghana. I mean, Africa is Africa, and it's many nations. So, and then what I did was I did something that nobody's ever done before. And this is gonna sound like something racial, but it's not. There's what's known as a coon carnival. And it's, 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 the, it's the Cape Colored Musical Festival that they do every year, like they would do in Brazil and whatever. And it's their own language and style. And I actually hired 500 of them. And they're gonna march into the stadium, they're gonna dance, I'm paying them. They come in and it's gonna be the cultural thing that I'm doing there because I wanna make this as a Cape Town crusade and it's going to be off the chain. And somebody said, well, some of them are not saved. I said, what do I care? I'm going to get them saved. Oh, you think I'm stupid? Please. Do you think, you think unsaved people offend me? Uh -uh. Plus, we have two key African singers that could fill the stadium by themselves. And they're all on board. They, they, they're radical. They're on fire for Jesus. One has already helped us, Jonathan. Um, Rebain. Rebain. I mean, phenomenal. When he sings, I just weep. It's just phenomenal. It's in, the, it's in their language. And he does all of the top different music groups of modern era. And I said to him, do not do one of their songs. I want your songs. I want your songs, your cultural songs, you do them. And many sings, it's, it's like off the chain. I love it so much. So, and then the other brother, I haven't met him yet, but I mean, when you called oh, him. Oh, I talked to him. He's on fire for God. He, he went straight to the radio station, jumped on there, started pumping the thing. So the biggest problem, we don't have room, but Brother Ted, okay. So I want to say this publicly right now. When we were doing those stadiums back after Kelly died, I made a vow of 100 million souls. So we did Soweto, then we did Mlazi, then we did Mamalodi, then we did Ndatsani. The next township we were going to was Kailicha, which is right bordering where that stadium is. So I am planning in 2025 a mass crusade there will be 250,000 people in that township because I felt that we hadn't finished the work. See, when, the, when I was doing those meetings, the Lord said to me, America. And I said, what? I said, I'm already doing these masks. So he said, America. He, and then we ran to 55 cities. We saw 1.1 million people saved. And then I felt it wasn't fast enough. And then we got open up television. We saw 1.1 million in a year. But even then I felt like it's not fast enough. That's why I went off to believing God to see evangelists raised up. And we sing that with your nephew. We sing that with the other shuttles with clan. We, it's like the dynasty, evangelist Ankit, and many other evangelists that are being mobilized and are all different. You know, everybody, every evangelist is maybe like doesn't understand the other evangelists. I don't need to understand an evangelist. An evangelist is an evangelist. They're all different. They're all unique. They don't have to be like me. They don't even have to preach like me. They just do what they do because we need many different, they, we're not all the same, but that's what makes it, you're going to reach people I can never reach. You're going to go to places I can never go and vice versa. So that's, that's the thing. So I am so excited about this because this state of meeting, I believe will set the stage for the next 10 years for our ministry and for what God is going to do. And it's, it is big. It is huge. It is it's something very, very big. I don't even understand it all. I can't even put it into words. Hmm. And when I think about it, I just start to weep. People look at me, are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not having a breakdown or anything. I am overwhelmed with this and I can't get it away from me. But Africa, as you said, God's not done with Africa. The devil's not going to have Africa, and he's not going to have America. So you can put that in your pipe and smoke it, <laughs> but it ain't happening. It is not happening, not on our watch. No. Wow. No, not on our watch.
If you go back to the map real quick, I'll show you something um, where the cursor is, where this dot is, this maroon dot. That is the stadium. That's Athlone Stadium right there. What Pastor is talking about is down here to the bottom right, that's Kyalicha. That's Kyalicha right there. Mitchell's playing right here, but that's Kyalicha where he's talking about right here. And then Which also, I actually preached there in my first years of my ministry, 1980, 81, 82, 83. I preached there in Kyalicha and Mitchell's playing. I've been all over there. <laughs> I've been all over there. I just wasn't <laughs> drawing maybe 200 people, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know I was going to shake the region and I get these 50 people. You know, this is great. This is great. Okay, how are you going to shake the region? But I just kept it in my spirit. And uh, see, you like know. in Kyalich, I click on this one. This 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 church right here needs eight taxis, eight wow. taxis right there. And you know, we have a clip from Pastor Julian's on the ground, and he did a clip just today, kind of talking about the buses and Let's taxis. Let's do that. Let's, so he's given so an Pastor update. Pastor Julian is our outreach pastor that we shipped over there with his wife and kids. We said, we need someone in the ground. All the pastors are working, but they are running their own churches. But we need somebody from RMI that's on the ground there that can just keep the thing cranking. So we sent him over there, and they left right before the winter camp meeting. Isn't that right? So they left before, they didn't, even, they didn't even make the conference. They went right over there. She is South African, mm -hmm. and they right there, and so God's using them. Let's roll the clip. Hey, Pastor Rodney and the Tampa team at RMI, we love you guys so much. Uh, here we are in Cape Town, South Africa, getting ready for Cape Town Ablaze. We are so excited. April 19, 20, and 21, we're going to be running buses, taxis, getting people to the event. We're looking at 30,000 plus in that arena. Very excited for what God is doing. Um, we're looking at 200 or so taxis in the townships between uh, Kadicha, Guguletu, Langa, Delft, and the local pastors are gonna take ownership and run those taxis so everyone's connected back to the local church. Same thing with the bus. The buses are gonna be run by local pastors and people from the local church. And then we encourage everyone, each one bring one. Operation Andrew, bring somebody with you, the lost, the backslidden, someone that doesn't know Jesus, bring them with you. So they come to the event, they get saved, they get born again, they get filled with the Holy Ghost, they get touched. Then they get plugged in right there with the local church that they just came to the event with. And it's all connected back to the local church. And uh, we're just really excited. You know, just within the townships alone, uh, we have to run all these taxis because in the townships alone, the, the unemployment is 50% or higher. And it's, it's quite significant. And so people don't have transportation. And so when you're offering free transportation, it's just on another level because they don't get free transportation like that. So you, so you see these bus numbers are very high. People are very hungry. And uh, so we're going to be running taxis in the townships and the buses are in the local churches going to do like a shuttle drop off. And the reason why we're doing it that way is because in the local uh, townships, the crime is so high that if we don't drop people off at their houses, they could get robbed or mugged or there could be issues. And so literally the taxis will pick them up, they'll take them to Athlone and then they'll drop them back off at their house. And when you start talking safety, the pastors are like, yes, we must keep our people safe. And so we're all in agreement on that. And it's just such an awesome thing to be able to see, you know, a taxi is not the yellow cab you see in New York. The taxi here in South Africa is a 15 passenger van and uh, the buses hold about 60 people. And so you're talking about quite a number of people that are gonna be coming to the event, that are gonna be moving through the transportation system. And um, a large a portion of people will be coming on the buses because of the fact that it's free transportation. They don't have to worry about petrol. They don't have to worry about um, you know getting to and from the event or the safety of their own vehicle. So it's just, it works out for everybody. And, we're just super excited uh, working with Pastor Kyle Driver for the River Cape Town and uh, my wife, Pastor Anya's here and, uh, and my kids. And we're just, we're just so thrilled to be here. We just thank God that, that, that the Lord allowed us to be a part of this. And thank you, RMI and Pastor Rodney, for allowing us to be a part of this. We are so excited for what the Lord is doing. We created a bus route map uh, with all the different points. It's got the on onboard churches, whether they get a bus, a taxi, or if they're just going to come and just be supportive. Uh, we're just really excited for what God is doing, and we believe that Cape Town shall be saved and that Africa belongs to Jesus. Amen. I love you guys. Okay, so why I believe this is significant, because if you think of areas of the world that are in upheaval, 
This model that we're doing now won't work anyway because there's unrest, there's whatever. So, and somebody said, well, somebody's going to have to pay for the buses. Yeah, we will. Well, you know what happened is Madagascar heard what we were doing, and it's a real problem over there, too. So we what are you sent telling me? <laughs> Madagascar's you running. Mean, you must have got to be paid for buses in Madagascar. Oh, but only 150. Only 150? <laughs> when, when did this happen? It happened today. It I happened mean, today. Can and, you, uh, do you have a report for me? I actually do. I got the pastor. Uh, he told us he was, knows what we're doing in Cape Town. So he said, you know, Pastor Eric, we, we got the same problem here. We only need 150 buses, though. So, so I'm paying for 150, 150. buses. <laughs> wow. So this is uh, Apostle Shema, and he went right out into the streets. It was raining, and he, and he sent a clip appealing for the buses. So let's okay. just watch Roll it. Roll it right now. <laughs> Hello, this is Pastor Shama all the way from Madagascar. I'm here to let you know that we are busy just giving progress to Dr. Ronnie or all the team that are beyond the scene and making sure this program is happening. I'm here at the bus station to show you how people struggle here to move around, how hard, how difficult it is. That's why as an organization here on the ground, we need to get some bus going on. We need about 150 bus every night. And these are not large buses. You can see they are moving here. This bus will help people to get at home in time so that they are not a uh, victim of any kind of uh, which is raining, I'm sorry, but I needed to come out just to let you know, to show you what's going on here in Madagascar, in Antanarivo. It's very hard for people to get moving, especially around this time. So to make sure that the people come out and attend the meeting, we'll be letting them know that there will be bus for you, bus to take you home so that they can be safe and get to the, their place. So I'm looking forward to have this great meeting. People are expecting. We are getting news. There is something going on on the social media, and really God is visiting Madagascar. Thank you, everybody beyond the scene, everyone that is making this happen. We're looking forward to be with you on the 13th and the 14th of April here. Thank you, Dr. Ronnie, for considering coming to be a blessing in this place. And all the team, we are praying for you and expecting that God will do it for us in this season. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, okay, here's the crazy thing. So I felt in my spirit right, right up front when we were doing Cape Town, the number 600 buses. How many buses do we already have committed? Um, in Cape Town, yeah. 600. Okay. Um, but there were also trains, and there were trains that run right up to where the stadium is. So I was going to hire the trains and pay everybody's transportation for the trains, which would be a free ticket on the trains. Come to find out that some of the cartels operating have pulled all the copper wire out of the trains so the trains can't run. The trains are shut down. True. The people were stealing the copper wire, you know, the electric trains and stuff like that. So there's no, there's no cables for the trains to run on. And in some places they've stolen the rails. <laughs> they stole the rails. And in some places, they stole the beams for the rails to stand on. So there's no way for the train. So I was even praying, okay, well, I'll fix the rails. Find out what I need to do. I'll, I'll get the trains running again. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm praying, oh, no, I, I want them trains going. I wanted the trains running, the pastor. If we put the train, if we put the wire back for the trains, they'll steal it again. <laughs> I said, make it electric charge. So they still, you know, they get, they get shocked. But anyway. And, that, and that's why in Cape Town, we have hired 550 security. 550. For the stadium? Just for the stadium. Wow. Because it's not only inside, it's you got to protect everything else. Right. Let me just update you quickly. Sure. Do you have anything else you want to say more about that other than tell the people where to give? And I think we're going to do another song, and then Dr. Tate's going to shake. Okay. $50, St. Petersburg, Florida, from Dave. Michael and Melissa, $100. Gerard, 127 
uh, 55 thank you, Gerard, Lydia, $50, Tamarack, Florida, Annette, $200, Valrica, Florida, Lance, $50, Kentucky, thank you, Maggie, $1,000, Ozark, Missouri, thank you so much, Robert, $100, Fort Meade, Florida, Roxanne, in Gatesville, North Carolina, $50. Pat for dollars, Wichita, Kansas, thank you. Jane, $100, Rapid City, South Dakota. Ernest, $83.39 from Ruskin, Florida. M uh, Mark Arthur, $50 from Nolensville, Tennessee. Melissa, $100, Milford, Massachusetts. Jacqueline, $17.39 from Tampa, Florida. Jacqueline, $300. Libertyville, Illinois. And then on Cash App, Viviana, $350. Rebecca, $10. And then uh, PayPal, $1,000 from Andre. Thank you so much. Bjorn, $500. Thank you, Bjorn. Hannah, $10. Esther, $215. Janet, $100. And Miguel, $100. Let me just say this. Um, if you're a lady watching, stop. Go watch the ladies' conference. My wife's over there in the next building broadcasting. There should be no ladies watching us right now. Mm -hmm. You should be clicking on revival.com and following the click to the Covenant Women's Conference. This is for men only. All right. So, so you know, the initial goal this week when the Lord really spoke to you and you said, I'm going to flip it and went into a solothon was 500,000 or more. And we're 60,000 away from that right now yeah, tonight. We, 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 we need to hit do that, that tonight. in the next two and a half hours. So 60,000 away. Come on, go to revival.com, click invest now. Different ways you can give. And, I'll and, go and let me tell you, if we don't get the 500,000 done, I'm going to just sit here in front of the camera. I'm going to say nothing. <laughs> and I'll sit past midnight, one or two o'clock. You can go home. And I'll just sit there and stare at the camera. Because <laughs> I have to pay for a lot of buses now. Because Madagascar just added another 150 buses. All right. Okay, so tell them what so, to do to give. So and we're going to go to a song and then to Dr. Ted. $10,000 love gift. Six of you do that. Boom, we're there right now, and Pastor's not sitting here all night looking at a camera. So you do it. Come on. $10,000. <laughs> I need to sleep. <laughs> $10,000 love gift for Africa. Come on, for the budget, assigned stewardship edition Bible. And, uh, of course, you know, blue, black, or burgundy. It's amazing. And then the we book. have it in Spanish. We also have it in Amplified Classic or King James Version, the original one that Paul used. <laughs> and then the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing, kingdom business, ways of the wind, and perpetual harvest. And, of course, Pat, uh, Brother Ted was talking about an offering of faith. Come on, for some of you, that would be an For some of you, you could do it and not even miss it. But for others, that could be an offering of faith. Do what, he's do what the Lord's telling you to do. $5,000 love gift uh, for Africa, the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing, kingdom business, ways of the wind, and perpetual harvest. Phenomenal book. And then for a $2,500 love gift, the book on revival, the ways of the wind, the Holy Spirit. And for a $1,000 love gift, the book on revival. Ask the Lord what he'd have you do and do that. Now, as we go down from there, do whatever you can, whatever the Lord's telling you to do. You could do seven fifty. You could do five hundred. And the, the cost of a bus is three hundred dollars. Three hundred bucks. The okay. cost of a taxi is, is eighty dollars. So somebody said, "God has not spoken to me. Look at me. Give <laughs> now." <laughs> That's it. He just spoke to you. <laughs> no, when you think about it, he came to America with three hundred dollars. A bus is three hundred dollars. Most people could do three hundred. I mean, definitely everybody could do. And how 80. many will be on that bus? Uh, sixty-five to a hundred. Yeah. Well, sixty-five they say, but in Africa it's a lot more. <laughs> it's it is the way it is. Johnny, I mean. Johnny, where are you? I'm under the seat, Mom. Are you okay there? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm aiming on to the crusade. They'll have to unfold me. Well, you know, in Umlazi, we even had up to maybe 150 on a bus where the things couldn't even hardly move. So we, we had to put some parameters in there. But anyways, <laughs> so it's a fact. 
So ask the Lord what he'd have you do and do that. Go to revival.com, many different ways to sow seed, but do that right now. Go to revival.com, click invest now. All the ways to give are coming up. And the Lord's speaking to you about a seed. Do that right now. Offering of faith, 10,000, 5, 2,500, 1,000, or 300 for buses, 80 for taxis. And then also you can give through uh, your cell phone. You can text 77977, give RMI. There's a drop-down box that says Africa. Make sure you click that. Cash app. Most everybody has cash app. Dollar sign, Revival Ministries. Then there's a memo. Put Africa, your first name, your business name. The Lord's speaking to people from your business. So from your business. So personally. Pastors, leaders, you're believing for souls and revival. So, so into it. Church. Yeah. And please don't let the only $10,000 gift tonight be Dr. Ted who came here to work like a, you know. <laughs> he should be resting, but thank God he came to help me. Anyway, we're going to go to the song, Give Upon This Rock. When we come back, go right to Dr. Ted Shazra Sr., who's going to give you a special word today. Do it. Roll it.
Yeah, these are songs that people stop singing, and I'm not going to let these songs die. I'm reviving a lot of these songs, and we've got so many more. And also, we're reviving some of the great hymns of the church, which is very, very important that we do just that. So just continue your giving, and Dr. Ted will hand back over to you. What are you doing to now? Huh? What are you doing now? Well, you know, it takes my preaching to convict me. <laughs> what is this? There you go, buddy. 25,000. Oh. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. What happened was, I knew what we had, and I thought I was emptying emptying my account like I did for Brother Sumrall, but uh, <laughs> I remembered she made a deposit. So I said, how much was the deposit? Mm -hmm. So by the time you get that check in, that will clear, and I can literally say I gave you everything. <laughs> Is there any other money anywhere else, dear? All right, let's take a third offering from the front row. Praise God. Well, surely somebody can match that. Come on, really. Know, I, I, listen, I mean, it's just overwhelming. Yeah. Let's pray for them <laughs> again. Father, this man was supposed to just come and help me. And he's, he's funding the whole thing here. <laughs> Lord, this is going to take care of many, many buses. This will take care of Madagascar, Thank the buses. Yeah. And so, Lord, whatever we do in Africa, let the harvest, let, let the rewards come to them. And, Lord, as they sown into the foreign field, that the mighty harvest shall come. And, Lord, do a quick work. Do a quick work. Before the end of the month, before the end of March, let there be a flood. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Know, you. I just, I just okay. feel to say this. We have a preacher here sowing, so 25 and 10, in the ministry. We got business people watching. We got kingdom business people around the world that are anointed to create wealth in business. Come on, business people. Do what the Lord's telling you to do. Don't let the preachers do it all. Come on. Come on, business people. Go to revival.com, sow a seed. That puts us about, what, what is it, 30, 35,000 away from the 500,000 500, mark. Go to the phones and do that right now. Come on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Which pastor, Eric, and now we're talking about this. I mean, some of, the, some of the biggest supporters of what we do are churches and pastors and ministers. Mm -hmm. And we were saying, where, where are all these business people? What is, what is happening? But, you know, if God just has to bypass them and just go straight to help in the church and just raising up right. the church to do it, then, then so be it. Here's a pledge for $1,000. This comes from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Thank you for Joshua. And here's $25 coming from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I hear they said that the reason Jesus wasn't born there because they couldn't find three wise men and a virgin. Anyway, that's <laughs> terrible. I know. Don't worry. There's a few other places in the world that are called Bethlehem, and I use the same line. I'm not just picking on you. This is the only place you can call in with a pledge and get roasted. Uh, and then here's 50. <laughs> I, I think that's funny. Sorry. If you get offended, apologize. All right. No, I'm going to offend you more. All right. This one is Little, Little Mountain, South Carolina, $50. And it's for Africa. Thank you to Little Mountain from um, 
Dana, Dana. And then here's Kareen from Fort Worth, Texas, and giving $1,000. Thank you so much from Fort Worth. And then we'll run through this here. Hunterville, North Carolina, 1382, $200 from Brett. Well, I'm not sure where you are. Robert, I'm not sure where you are, 1450. Brian from Adelanto, California, $100. Jim, not sure where you're from, $100. Gilberto and Jessica, $25. David, $200 from Kissimmee. Brandon, $25 from Lakeland. Uh, Juan is $100 from Western Florida. Tulalope, which I think you gave last night or the night before, because I recognize your name, $100. Joseph, $110 from Pembroke Pine. Marika, $1,000 from Kent, New York. Thank you so much. Cecil, $100. Or maybe not Cecil. That was the lion that killed everything. Cecil the lion. Or they shot him. But he was ravaging whole herds of villabies and yeah. impala. So he got what's coming to him. Anyway, $100 from Riverview. Robert, $100. Christian, $25 from Baltimore, Maryland. Clifton, $150. And, and it's from Hayes, Virginia. And then on cash app, Bill, $20, and Ben with $30. Thank you so much for your giving. Kavika, you can get that back to them. All right. Well, do Dr. Ted, if you'll take over and share what you started out sharing right at the beginning. And um, Praise God. St stop writing checks. <laughs> well, that... Clean that account out, my brother. Amen. <laughs> Have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, the Lord let me come down for the Kingdom Business uh, Conference in January, and it worked out that we could be here. Uh, I was glad for many reasons, looking back, because uh, my wife got to be with her father for what has proven to be the last few days of his life before he went to heaven. God works out everything perfectly. I mean, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the spirit of praise coming up in my spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All things are working together for our good right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And those of us that are called according to his purpose, hallelujah. It's like my dad used to preach, you can't lose for winning. And that's how I feel. Glory to God. But I came to the conference, and I was sitting there enjoying the different ones. And uh, Brother Rodney Howard Brown said to me, I believe uh, Brother Ted has a word. I had no word. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> but I know God speaks to him. But you know what's funny? The move of the spirits like headlights on your car. The further you drive, the more you see. And I, I took the mic, and uh, his brother Basil was sitting in front of me, my nephew John. And when I took the mic from him, the anointing came up in my spirit. I could feel it like whoosh, bubble up, bubble. I mean, it just started bubbling up. And I felt a tremendous strength. And I heard the Lord say, the battle is not your battle. But the battle is the Lord's. If I could encourage every one of you that are watching, you that are here in the studio, it's not your battle, it's the Lord's battle. Paul said to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. It's the one fight the devil can never win. It's the one fight the child of God always wins. Hallelujah. Everybody say the battle, the battle. is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. Many times when I was in the midst of breakthrough, I had to be careful that I didn't break down because your body, your flesh will fail you. The spirit will never fail you. I remember one time God was promoting us and things were starting to go well, and I had to take three months to just uh, kind of slow down a little bit, to pray, to study, to seek God. I still put my tent up. Uh, each of those months, June, July, and August, but I did it within 30 miles of my uh, home where I live. And as the Lord would have it throughout the years, those meetings when I felt like things were shutting down, 
God used them to birth some things. And as a result, it affected the political realm in our state. It affected the physical realm. It affected the souls of many who in that area were Catholic when they heard of the miracles God was doing. And so you never slow down, but you always have God uh, lead you. And when he leads you, sometimes it looks like you're going slower than molasses. I mean, what's taking so long? There's other times there's an acceleration God will put on you and things just start falling into place, falling into place. But that's when you learn that the battle is not your battle, but the battle is the Lord's. I started prophesying to the crowd that was here last year, and I looked over and I saw the anointing coming on Pastor Rodney uh, because I believe that probably that word was instrumental in loosing something for him to continue the 300 cities and to do the African countries. I have the clip ready. You want to play it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, roll the clip. This is the camp meeting, kingdom business that we had over a year ago. And this is when I looked at Dr. Taylor. I saw the anointing on him and said, I believe you have a word. I gave it the mic. Roll it. Greet the people. Praise God. Amen. I was just thinking of the verse of Scripture where the Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the congregation upon Jehaziel and said, The battle is not your battle, but the battle is the Lord's. And I was looking at a modern translation. And it said, <clears throat> you're going to make it. Hallelujah. So if God's fighting a battle, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. The doctor tells you you're going to die, you're going to make it. If you wonder where the next dollar is coming from, you're going to make it. And it'll turn into a million. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You wonder what you're going to do next? You're going to make it. Hallelujah. You're going to make it when nobody else is making it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The battle's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. He's never lost one fight. Glory. I'm going to make it. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you're going to make it. Every day you wake up, you're going to make it. No matter what the world's happening tonight, we're going to make it. I dare you to say, I'm going to make it. Shout, I am making it. Right now. The battle. Not my battle. Basil, the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm making it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I am making it right now. The singers are out ahead of us. I hear them singing. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. For his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Just today, the mayor of Atlanta sent me the contract for Turner Field. Hallelujah. I'm the only preacher they're letting in this year, they said. But I think I'm going to spearhead it that you go in there. Amen. Because the battle is not my battle. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. The mayor didn't know it, but he's going to make it. Hallelujah. What he made happen for me, God's going to make happen for him. Hallelujah. 
Last time I was there, the mayor was Hakeem somebody, and he took me for every nickel he could get. And there was a lady that helped me. Her name was Keisha Bottoms. And I got so happy, I said, Keisha, you're the mayor now. I'm making you the mayor. And a few months after I left there, they called and said she became the mayor in January. Amen. And she was the mayor the last four years. But now the guy that's there now, he's a spirit-filled brother. Hallelujah. The battle's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. I dare you to lift your hand and just say, Lord, I'm winning. I'm winning my battle right now. I'm making it right now. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going under. I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to let anything keep me down. I'm going to make it because the battle is not my battle. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Everything's turning around for my good. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey! 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 We're making it right now. Oh, glory to God. Then look at your neighbor and tell him, you're going to make it, 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 you're going to make it. Hey, glory to God. You are making it now. Battle's not your battle. The battle's not your battle. The battle's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord said million dollar offerings, billion dollar flow. Hallelujah. Oh, For the years over, million dollar offerings, billion dollar flow. Glory to God. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. You're making it right now. You're not even faking it. You're making it. Glory to God. Hey, Shekin Namaha. Hallelujah. The battle's not your battle. Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's. Glory to God. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon you in the midst of the congregation. He'll spin you like a top. You'll run like a, a deer. Glory to God. The battle's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. There'll be a new wind and a second breath. Glory to God. Be a fresh wind from glory. Hallelujah. Take you around the world and up and down and all around. Oh, the battle's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Did I tell you you're going to make it? Uh, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> no more struggling. Glory uh, to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, and so I tell every one of you, you're going to make it. Look up to your elder brother Jesus right now. Say, Lord, thanks for helping me make it. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory. Our faith, our faith, our faith, our faith, our faith, our faith in God. Hallelujah. The battle's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. And as a dear man taught me years ago, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Amen. Bring him back. So there's the word that you gave, which really last year was very supernatural year. Mm. And then you, if you saw that prophecy, you said you go up and down the world, which at that time, we didn't even think we'd ever travel. And then the call came from Ghana, which I was supposed to go for four days, we ended up going for three weeks. And then it was so, it was so on me that we, we wept. So then I said to Pastor Eric, I have to hit 10 more countries in Africa. And so that's when we went back in September. And then when I was there, I said, we have to go back. So I'm actually, af <laughs> I'm afraid when I go now, <laughs> it's gonna, they, 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 everybody's going to go, I come back here in May, folks. We go in another 10 countries. But God's doing, and as the word that you had right at the beginning, which you need to take it and run, but God's going to shake the continent of Africa in a powerful way. So go and for that it. that prophecy linked two things. And I want you to think about what I'm going to tell you. I don't make those things up. I didn't have notes. I just get up and speak as the Lord gives me the words. But God linked the fact that he's helping us. It's 
not our battle, it's his. You're going to make it. And then a strange, unusual word was in that. There's going to come a billion-dollar flow and million-dollar offerings. And so I've held to that when I came on the platform tonight here in the studio. I said, I'm believing for one million dollars. I don't even know what the goal was. I'm just telling you, I'm believing for a million dollars for this Solathon to preach the gospel to our friends around this world, but in particular as he uses Rodney Hart Brown, who he saw before he was born. He anointed him in his mother's womb. He watched over him as a child. He raised him up to do what he did. And then he visited him and put the fire of heaven on his soul. I don't know very many, if any, ministers that can say what our brother testifies happened to him. Yeah, I've had supernatural experiences. I've had God lead me in times that I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I could feel the doors opening. I've had God tell me that if I would obey him, he would show me a perfect way. Everybody say that that are watching. You that are here say, a perfect way. Do you know what a wonderful feeling it is to know you're not out of the will of God, not even by an inch, not even by an inch? When I was a teenager, I had, I would say, the second vision I ever had. I considered that a spiritual vision. And in that vision, God showed me, it was out in the air, almost like these screens around the studio, but it was in the air. And to be honest, I was at a youth camp, about 800 to 1,000 people at this youth camp. And I was sitting next to an Italian girl. I don't know her name. I just know that everybody dared me, all the guys, we dare you to put your arm around her during the service. Not we dare you to pray in the spirit for the whole service, not sing with a great anointing. But that was the kind of guys I hung out with. They, they needed help, a lot of help. But I, I went and sat next to her, and then I tried to put my arm around her. When the minister spoke, he said, there's a young man that Jesus appeared to you when you were a boy. My arm stopped in midair because that was my first vision. When I was seven, I saw the Lord come out of the sky, come down, and speak to me concerning what I was to do for him. And I was so afraid, I ran back to the church parsonage where my parents lived and resided. My dad was the pastor. And I told my mother, well, she said, be like little Samuel. The next time the Lord does that, say, Lord, here I am. I said, no, I don't want there to be a next time. And there was not a next time for seven years. But now, that night, when the minister said, and how would he know out of a thousand young people? He was speaking by the Spirit. And I was just getting ready to hug that girl and win, win the bet. Very spiritual youth camp. They were going to buy me hamburgers and sodas every day. But just as I started to do it, my arm froze in the air because Jesus had appeared to me. And he said, whoever this is, God's calling you to come to the altar tonight. I went down. When I went to the altar, I was surprised, ladies and gentlemen, to see others were there. I thought, wow, Jesus has appeared to other people. Actually, I asked some of them. He hadn't. It's just there was a conviction. When God begins to speak like he's speaking right now in this solathon, there's a conviction that's linked to souls and to giving. I don't care who you are, where you're from. If you have any compassion for the lost, then part of who you are is your money. And you're willing to give so that others might be free. Amen. You're willing to give so that others might... Can you imagine how many hundreds of thousands are going to hear the story of Jesus for the first time? For the first time. That's powerful. 
What, 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 what can you give for that? You can't give anything. You could give everything away, and it doesn't even compare to the greatness of the gospel message. Those precious folks, whether it's Madagascar or in South Africa, wherever our brother is being led, it's the battle that God has called him to. The thing is, it's not your battle. It's God's battle. It's God saying, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach this little fella, and I'm going to raise him up, put my fire on him, send him to America, send him around the world. I'm going to use him for my glory. And angels said, yes, Lord, because there is no disagreement. Once God speaks, then it becomes put in motion. Think of it this way. The words become like vehicles that carry the mighty anointing of the Spirit to our world. Thank God. And so I had this vision. And I saw myself, and I've learned not to put interpretations on visions, but I saw myself preaching, but I looked older. And everybody in that vision was black. And so I thought, this is the early 60s, I thought God was calling me to Africa because the only black folks I knew were the missionaries' slides they showed when they came back from Africa. But as the Lord has done it over these 47 years, I've preached in our great cities, in these urban centers. And when you look out under the tent of our audience, it's primarily African-American, Hispanic, even our First Nation people. We have a very mixed audience in these inner cities. But what happened was, I knew that night I was called, see. Then when I was 21, I went to the island of Jamaica. I was invited by a missionary to preach. And one night I was standing on a wooden platform that we built. We had several thousand people on the field. And as I turned this way to make my point that the Lord had put in my spirit, there was the vision I had when I was 14. There was the guy sitting in the tree, sitting along a concrete wall. There were the people in those wooden benches that they built. I even saw across the street the bus stop, people sitting on top of the bus stop. Do you know how wonderful it feels to know you haven't missed the will of God even by an inch? I mean, I was in the perfect will of God. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. But in this segment, I wanted to remind every one of you that uh, were just watching and have joined us that the prophetic word last year, I felt, lit some kind of a new fire upon my brother because he told me one night in his bedroom, the fire came in his bedroom again. And from that point, church by church, city by city, country by country, it has come to pass the true test of a prophecy is it must have the testimony of Jesus Christ in it. The true test of a prophetic word, somewhere in there, Jesus will get the glory. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. And so the Lord said to me, tell the people, tell Pastor Rodney, there's coming a billion-dollar flow. Do you think God is going to let the devil have the upper hand in the last days? Do you think all the wealth of this world is going to be used by the wicked and cartels and uh, crooked politicians and anything you want to name that's corrupted? I tell you, no. The devil is not going to write the last chapter of history. But God has a book. And he's always writing. The Bible calls it the book of remembrance. He's always writing in that book. In that book, there's a page there, maybe pages now, I'm sure. And at the top, it'll say Rodney Howard Brown, Donica Howard Brown. And then it'll start listing what they have been assigned to do. And there'll be check marks, done for God, finished for the Lord. Oh, there's his little daughter, Kelly. She's in heaven. But there it was. And the devil said, here's where you quit. 
But he said, no, I'm going to take hundreds of millions of souls to heaven for that. The check mark went next to Kelly's name. And right down the list, by city and by auditorium and by the area of Madison Square Garden and everything you can think of, God is fighting the battle for us. Are you hearing me? When you sow, when you give, you join yourself to that one that you're sowing unto the Lord, but in agreement with. The Bible calls it a prophet's reward. A prophet's reward. And Jesus said that even if you give just a cup of water in his name, you will receive a prophet's reward. Now, I don't tell people to give everything they have, but several times God's told me to go to the next level, you've got to give an offering. If that offering that I give doesn't move me, then there's no Holy Ghost in it. It's something I knew I could do. Well, I began to fast and ask God to help me see more of the blind healed in the meetings. So I told my wife, I said, I'm, off of our bedroom is a, a trunk room, but I turned it into a prayer room. And I said, I'm going in there, and I'm not coming out till God gives me the anointing to see the blind healed. I go in. My wife goes down. We had two children, small at the time. And she was cooking hamburgers for Teddy and Megan and her. And the smell of those hamburgers come up through the floorboards into the trunk room where I was fasting. I remember very clearly. I said, Lord, we're going to start this fast tomorrow. And I went downstairs, and my wife said, what are you doing? I said, cook me one, too. I'm going to start tomorrow. And I did. I started the next day. And she had uh, intelligence enough to not cook in the house, but to go out on the patio and cook. I, I stayed there. I don't know how long, days, whatever it was, and I'm praying. And into that fast, I heard the Lord say to me, which is greater, souls or money? I said, Lord, you know I believe souls are greater. And then I felt bad. Does he think I'm mercenary? I mean, I wasn't taking up large offerings. I mean, I was having them taken from me, but I didn't take them up. I kept fasting. The time went by. I heard my wife go to bed. I knew the next day the sun came up. I was in there. I wasn't coming out for 100% B for nothing. I mean, I'm staying in there. I heard it again. Whether it was audible or not, I'll wait till I get to heaven. But to me, it seemed very real, very loud. Which is greater, souls or money? I heard it again. I did feel a little bad. I felt like the Lord punched me in the stomach. It's like I got real tight in my stomach, the muscles. I was feeling bad. I, I said, Lord, I'm believing for the blind. I'm believing to see people saved. And time went by. I don't know how long. The reason I don't like to talk about how long, because people then say, if I go that long, God will talk to me. If I, uh, it's different for everybody. And that's how people get squirrely. They have trouble because in their mind, they begin to box God in. Just go along for the ride. Just enjoy life. Let God anoint you and let God lead you. Life is good. Hallelujah. All the time, God is good. Amen. So then I heard it a third time. Which is greater, souls or money? I said, Lord, for the last time, I believe souls are greater. And here's what he told me. If you don't have faith for the lesser, which is money, how are you going to have faith for the greater, which are souls. And then I heard the verse, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? And what shall he give in exchange for it? I prophesy, Brother Rodney, the day is coming. The Lord is going to give you what I'm going to call a war chest. It will be filled with millions upon millions of dollars so that you won't even have to take two or three days or four days or five days to take these assignments on. But you shall say, here's the check. Here's the money. Wire this. Let it happen now. Because going forward, there's going to be a timing linked with our crusade efforts. There's going to be a timing. I prayed about where do I put my tent in June? And then I heard our president currently is going back to Scranton 
to do a political rally or something. And I looked and I said to my son-in-law, didn't we book a meeting during that time? And sure enough, our tent will be up on Daryl Strawberry Field, the time that the president will be there in the town trying to influence people for votes. But I believe in God's timing that we went in there and we have the permits and we have everything ready to go. We have the lodging. We have the cruise transportation. Everything's ready, I thought. But while I was sitting here, the Lord said, now you shall begin to rent buses for your tent meetings. And that came to me tonight just as plain. I can't wait to get on the phone and my son-in-law is my crusade director and tell him now you're really going to work. Amen. We're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to find the toughest areas of that area. And there are some rough areas in that area. And we're going to send teams in. And we're going to witness to them and tell them, here's where you get your bus. If I need five, I'll get five. If I need ten, I'll get ten. But the point is, there is a multiplying power when you get over in that flow that I call the billion-dollar flow. Because to God, to God and to his people, there are no resources being held back by God because one soul is worth more than the combined wealth of the world. If it profits a man, nothing. If he gained the whole world, he, that soul, is more valuable than the combined wealth of the world. We need to get a new way of thinking. You that are watching, you should be giving right now and giving what I'm going to tell you, an offering of faith. What does that mean, Brother Shuttlesworth? Because what the Lord then did, he began to work on me. And he said, when uh, I think his name was Klaus Schwab, announced we're going to experience a great reset was his speech. I read it in a magazine. I went through it. I thought everything this man's saying is opposite of what the Bible teaches. And so God spoke to me and he said, this is the beginning of James chapter five. The rich men that are evil are going to howl for their misery shall come up and their silver and their gold shall become corrupted. And the Bible says the cries of the working man, if you will, shall enter into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. When does this happen? Well, James 5 said in the last days they're going to try and heap treasures together. But you see the thing about the devil's heap and God's heap, the devil's heap rusts and cankers and erodes. But God's heap grows, expands, and blows up bigger. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say heaps of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 So I begin to think different now that I am believing for a billion dollar flow. I've actually sat down on a yellow legal pad and I wrote one billion dollars. Ten percent tithe. Brother Rodney, is some of us coming to you when I get that billion. Maybe all of it. Maybe you'll get the 900,000 and I'll keep 100 million or whatever. Who knows? But I'm saying I'm already thinking. If we're in the flow, that means you got to have a plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Million dollar offerings. A businessman just texted me and he's put 33,000 and we just crossed over 502,000. Oh, praise God. Yeah. So it's coming in. Here's uh, another 110 from Florida, Bill 25, another $50 to Santa Rosa Beach, another $30 to Auburndale, another $100 to Hunt, Hunterville, North Carolina, another $100, another one from Springfield, Virginia, then $500 from uh, Steli, and then on Cash App, uh, $10 from Dalton, Jason 50, Preston, who's related to you said, right over there yeah two thousand dollars thank oh, you Preston. and then um you just went up to 512 while you're talking Look. yeah it's jumped another i don't know where that came in but yeah it's happening <laughs> it's happening 
But I you, believe God could give us a million dollars tonight. I believe like that. Yeah, we've got 45 minutes. <laughs> How long? 45 minutes left on the Saturday. Praise satellite. God. Well, let me finish <laughs> this thought. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish this thought. <laughs> Bonnie, I just thought of another account. Oh, How many no. we got? Oh, you can tell me later. <laughs> hey, I'm ready. <laughs> to get the million dollar offerings for you that are ministers, to bring in million dollar deals for you that have businesses, for you to have increased every one of us here. It starts with a seed. Not just any kind of a seed. The Lord told me an offering of faith. And my wife will tell you, I went down and I said, here's what I heard. And I had to pray it through. I said, Lord, what is an offering of faith? He said, an offering of faith is when you give me an offering that in the natural you cannot afford to give it. Now, I can tell you, the Lord had me do it when I didn't know what it was. And one time was Lester Sumrall, bless his heart. And he broke down, began to cry. And I, I'll never forget it. He felt to prophesy to me. And he began with tears to prophesy. And Bonnie was there. And the anointing, you could feel it come in his TV studio, like we're feeling the anointing. Just phew, come in. And his words, I never forgot them. As Wigglesworth blessed me with tears, so I bless you with my tears. Mm -hmm. You shall be the new breed. Thank God I'm the new breed. <laughs> Some may be the old breed, but I'm the new breed. Amen. And I received that. And right after that, ladies and gentlemen, our ministry began to grow and grow. When I first met Pastor Rodney Hard Brown, I had a church in England, in London, that wanted me to take it. And I came back, and I was sitting on the platform. He was the guest speaker. I'd never met him. And he turns around starts prophesying. And you'd have loved Brother Rodney in the, those days. He had a mullet cleared down his back. <laughs> it was unusual. I was holiness under the Lord. But uh, he, was, he was really the new breed. But you know what? I looked at him. See, sometimes you'll miss it if you look at the person that God's using. Don't ever look at the messenger and check him out. Man looks on the outward. God looks on the heart. And when he prophesied, he said, The Lord says... You shall travel. And all those smart alecky teachers at the Bible school where he was speaking, they chuckled. They thought, ah, that's no big deal. What they didn't know, I had to call that afternoon back to England and let them know whether or not I'd take the church in Stanhope Gardens. You see, God knows. And in that flow, if I hadn't obeyed God, if I hadn't obeyed God, you think about this every day. We receive hundreds of calls that come from all over the world, just from television, thousands of prayer requests, just from uh, crusades. We've mailed out several hundred thousand prayer cloths that I've laid hands on. I used to wear that bowl of cloth around my body. Nobody likes to look fatter than they are, but I'd do it and put my shirt on and try to get the buttons. If they ever came undone, shoot the people on the front row for, with a button. <laughs> but I'd wear the cloth on my body. And then we'd have ladies, Sue and Sister Cunningham, all those ladies would cut up those prayer cloths. Then I'd anoint them with oil and send them out. And the testimonies, I just sent one out, uh, what, four days ago, and a Vietnam vet that's been bedridden for years and unresponsive. His wife drove from up in Ocala all the way to Palm Harbor, Florida, got a prayer cloth, went back and put it on him, he came out of the coma, sat up in his bed, and within, I forget how many hours, do you remember, he was walking for the first time in years. <laughs> Hallelujah, the anointing. Everybody say the anointing. The anointing. Say the anointing. The anointing. Destroys, Destroys the yoke. And some of you are bound by fear about your finances. 
Here is the way you destroy the yoke of fear about money. Give God an offering of faith. Do it tonight. Some of you need to give a second one. I can feel it. You got convicted. If God told me, I know he's told all of you. <laughs> Dig down deep again. Get it out. Even you got to give the lint in the bottom of your pocket. Put it in and God will give you more lint. Hallelujah. <laughs> but give to God. Now, what higher purpose? Think of this. A Madagascar person. In Madagascar, they raise the dead every year in this evil ceremony. People have been dead 10 years, 20 years, and the demons come back in the bodies. And they walk out of these tombs and down the street. And the people bow down, literally worshiping the demons, but they think they're, they're worshiping their family. This practice in Madagascar is known by many of our friends that have traveled there. If the devil, if the devil can get people to worship him, he will. But here comes the Lone Ranger and his sidekick, Tonto, and they're coming. Because I saw, I saw his cowboy hat and I saw his cattle. And, here, and I knew Tonto's sister, by the way. Uh, but anyhow, Silver Hills was the last name. Here they come. Oh, devil, you're going to parade the dead, rotted flesh. <laughs> We're going to bring the life of Christ. I pray that Madagascar will be blown completely up by the Holy Ghost mm. so that the dead will never be raised out of tombs <laughs> again. I assign wow. angels to go to Madagascar this night and begin to prepare the way to break demonic strongholds off that nation so that they'll never see a dead body which has put fear and bondage in their minds and hearts. But Lord, let them see the dead raised in the meeting. Let them see the opposite of what the devil's doing mm. in Madagascar. And you that are watching, I want you right now to pray. In fact, I haven't even done this. I'm going to pray. Father, there are hundreds if not thousands that will watch this that need to give an offering of faith. Again, when I inquired of you, you said, if I give what I think I can afford to give, there's no faith in it. You said to me, you know you can do it. But an offering of faith is when I give you what I can't in the natural afford to do. That's where I am right now. That's where many are right now. Holding back nothing, but releasing by faith, Kasinga, Orande, Shamandingo, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Folks, wherever you're at right now, the Holy Spirit is releasing faith to give. Faith to give. Now, Easter's coming up, Resurrection Sunday. And I've heard preachers talk about give a resurrection seed. But let me tell you something. We should be giving offerings of faith every time the Holy Spirit puts his finger on our hearts to give to God. You're not going to take it with you. Banks are planning to take it from you. But if you give it to God and you lay your treasures up in heaven, thieves cannot break in and steal. Moths, rust, none of that will touch what you give to God. And then the Lord told me, then I'll build a wall of faith around my children. That's what he's doing for you and your sons and daughters, your grandchildren. A wall of faith. And what are we doing? We're saying Africa shall be saved. We all loved Reinhard Bunke. We all quoted his slogan from Cape Town to Cairo. But I watched. I saw no one pick up the mantle until I saw Brother Rodney doing that. And I'm telling you this is strategic. It's anointed, and I'm here tonight. When I prayed this morning, I just thought I was coming up for lunch, and then things changed. But I told my wife, who's here, I said, I saw myself teaching on giving. Brother Rodney was dressed like in black, and it was black all around us, and everything's black. But I noticed I had a nice suit on that was light-colored. Amen. Amen. 
when the guy wanted to put the mic here, I said, no, it was on this side. So I made him put it on the side and saw it. I mean, I believe in God speaking through visions. I believe he speaks through prayer. I believe he speaks by the Holy Ghost. So right now, whatever you got to do, I want you to prepare to give. Brother Eric, I think we need to tell him again. we got new folks, I'm sure. Well, just How let me, can they give? Yeah, let me read this quickly. This is coming from a place in Indiana, which, again, I can't read the handwriting on this thing. It's very sporadic. Um, but it's $900 from Russell in Indiana. I'm not sure where it is, but thank you so much. And then Bjorn in Bartow, Florida, $500. Evarista, $10. Effie Hills, uh, $90 from Mesa, Arizona. And then uh, someone called Heidi in Florida, $10,000. And then Jason and uh, Olivia Baxley, Georgia, $20. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I believe I read the, those. Yeah, we've read those. Okay. So that's how I'm looking at 514,000. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Coming into the last half an hour of the broadcast right now, um, go, to, go to the telephones. we got operators standing by ready to, uh, to receive the offering. Call 1-866-85-RIVER, 1-866-85-RIVER. The number's right on the screen. Many different ways to sow seed. Uh, for a $10,000 love gift, as you just heard one of those, it's the signed Stewardship Edition Bible, King James or Amplified Classic, and it comes in burgundy, black, or blue. And also give you the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing, kingdom business, ways of the wind, and perpetual harvest. This goes towards Africa, $2.7 million budget for seven countries and nine cities. For a $5,000 love gift, the book on revival, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the anointing kingdom business, the ways of the wind and perpetual harvest. And for a $2,500 love gift, the book on revival, ways of the wind and the Holy Spirit. And a $1,000 love gift, you know, is the book on revival. Brother Ted's been talking about an offering of faith. Do what the Lord tells you. And then also... Do what the Lord tells you to do, 800, 750, 500. We've been telling you all night, the buses, a bus is $300 to run a bus to fill it with 65 plus people to come and get saved, to get touched. And that's all connected to local churches, which are going to disciple the people and follow the people up after we leave. And then $80 is a taxi. $80, which are in the townships or the, 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 the most crime-ridden areas where we have to run taxis, and that's $80. So go to the phone, go to Revival.com, do whatever the Lord tells you to do, Revival.com, click on Invest Now, also Revival.com Giving, Revival.com forward slash PayPal, please mark Africa, Cash App is Dollar Sun Revival Ministries, and uh, in the memo, put your first and last name, put Africa put your business name or your ministry name. You can text 77977-GIVE-RMI. All these different ways to give her up. Maybe the Lord's speaking to you about sending a check in. Praise God. Loose it and send it in. RMI, P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. All of those ways to give are on the screen. Give an offering of faith and obey the Lord. So why this meeting is so significant? Because it's changing the way we operating. And basically, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna call myself the reluctant uh, crusade stadium evangelist, because I didn't want to do it. I don't really want to do it. I've been doing this a long time. Much easier to just raise up, which is what we have at River University. We're raising up evangelists and thank God for all of the ones that are being raised up. So it's not like, and you understand, I mean, you've been doing this longer than me. So it's like, okay, if that's what you want, we'll do it. Because we, we have to be obedient to obey the Holy Ghost, you know, and, um, and I'm, not dis, I'm not disgruntled, I'm not upset, I'm reluctant. Because people have no clue 
when you take on something of this magnitude to just get onto the platform. It's like a sheer war. It's like a war. You, you know what I'm talking about. And, um, and then just even, which what I'm finding, this is what's shocking me. So, <laughs> normally in the past, the problem would come from many of the preachers. In many places, it's not even happening anymore. So it's like another whole season. It was the early days we were always taking heat from ministers or whatever. And now I'm seeing people from different denominations come. People, when they tell me this is the head of even a Baptist group, and they're like, Brother Rodney, we're so glad you came. I was like, I'm waiting for the shoe to drop, but there isn't a shoe. <laughs> and even when we were in, remember when we were in Botswana and we had the representative of the evangelical thing, and he, he was asked to pray. He got up and said, now, Father, thank you for sending our brother here. We, we don't understand this Holy Ghost and fire, but we sure need it, so help us. And it was stuff like that that was just like, it was mind-blowing to me. So I, I thought, Lord, I don't really understand. So some of the heat we, we took, if you remember in that one, I want to mention the nation, was really the people involved in the political, the religious people that had crossed into the political realm were creating problems. Oh, yeah. And, and I thought, well, that takes on another new dimension. In other words, they were religious, and they were around the presidencies, and they were manipulating things. And I thought, well, that's a new turn. And I called the one guy who was, he was a spokesman to the president, and he was right in there, and he sat in my, my hotel room, and I said, you, sir, are a liar and you are the floor of this presidency, and you are a imposter. And he tried to, no, no, I said, you have lied to me the whole time. I said, my friend, I've been doing this a long time. You're a liar, and you're a fraud, and God's gonna deal with you. So he was trying to create a problem with me and the nation, and I just wasn't gonna bite. I totally ignored him. He tried to spread rumors, it backfired. It just backfired. So, but we, we're ready to handle that stuff. He hadn't been doing it a long time. You know, uh, it's like I said, I was born at night, but not last night. And you, you can see through the thing. I mean, you should have been in that hotel room that night. I mean, I just, I read his mail. I said, no, you've lied. You've manipulated everything. And then today I got a call from that country. And they said, you know, there were many bishops who wanted to see you, but that, pa that pastor, political operator, blocked them from seeing you. Blocked them from coming close. And uh, he said, why did you come back to this nation on this trip? I said, because I, uh, anyway, it's all happening. And, uh, you know, God exposes these things. And, and uh, but as I said, I'm the, I'm, I'm the reluctant. <laughs> but because maybe I read the story of Jonah, you know what I mean? So uh, go to Nineveh, no. <laughs> no, go to Nineveh. No, I'm taking a cruise. And so he takes a cruise and he's eating seafood. And, and the next thing he eats seafood and a big fish swallows him up. And he's swimming along. And when he's inside the, the fish's belly, he's thinking, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to go to Nineveh. This doesn't look like Nineveh. He's got seaweed wrapped around his head. He's got crustaceans all around him. And he's thinking, hmm, the only way out of here is not the way I came in. <laughs> so then he begins to repent. Okay, 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 I'll go. I'll go if you can get me out of this mess. I'll go, please. I'll do it. I'll do it. And, of course, he went in. He was a bad prophet. He was actually a non-prophet. He was a bad prophet. And... He went from bad to good, and of course you can't keep a good man down. And the fish is swimming along, and he's looking very disgruntled. And the other fish said, "What's wrong?" And he said, "Man, I ate something this morning. It's not good. Oh, what was it? three days ago? I ate something. I just can't eat anything more." Somebody said, "What it was? Ah, it's something they threw overboard. I think I ate a bad prophet. <laughs> this is bad sushi." And so they said, "Well, get rid of it." Okay, I will. I'm going to spit him out on this beach. 
and then he, he got vomited out, and he's on this beach, and uh, when he went to Nineveh, they looked at him. When he said, repent, they just repented. They saw this guy being eaten by gastric juices <laughs> and whatever, and they all turned, the whole of Nineveh come back, and um, so anyway, I read the story of, of Jonah. Here's a thousand dollars. Also, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa's wow. coming through here. Tulsa, Jerusalem. Here's um, this is okay. It just doesn't have an address, but two hundred fifty dollars. Thank you. Here's another sixty-five from Kill Devil Hills. Which, did they kill the devil there? Is he dead? North Carolina, $500 from Skokie, Illinois, 27 from Ranger, Georgia, another $500 from Benjamin, another $100 Pembroke Pines, $1,000 from DeLand, DeLand, Florida, over by the sea, and then another 200 from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We've got 100 from Chauncey, 51 from Seth Neal on Cash App, Aaron, $100. And then one one five hundred and fifteen forty six from Seth on PayPal and Matthew one dollar eighty six. Which I was it? Well, it's only a dollar eighty six. Yeah, but if a thousand people did that, okay, every little bit helps. Remember that. We have twenty three minutes, and we go. Is it twenty three minutes? Yeah, we go off there. So pick up your phone. Call that number now and push it. And let's do one more song. This one you remember, this was also Andre Crouch. It says, If I were a tree. Were well, you not a tree? Because a tree can't pick up a phone. <laughs> Even to make a trunk call. Roll it. Give now. If I was a tree, all I can do is lift my arms to you, Lord. If I was a bird, all I can do is sing a song for you. If I was a sun, all I could do is shine for you. But you created me in your image to give you the highest praise. If I was a tree, all I could do is lift my arms to you, Lord. If I was a bird, all I could do is sing a song to you. If I was a sun, all I could do is shine for you, but you created. Creeping things too. But when I say I've been redeemed, I guess the angels have to hold their way. Cause you created me in your image to give you the highest praise. You know that I'm not a tree, but I should open.
One more song. Let's do this right now. In him we move. This is a song from the 70s that I started listening to in the early part of my ministry, 1980-81. And this, these words carried me. And I found it. I can't remember where. And when I heard it, I saw it took, you, it took me right back. I thought, wow, I remember that. In him we move. And it's like what you said, the battle's not ours, but the Lord's. Roll it. Give. Just went over 519 with 13 minutes to go. Pastor Shannon, uh, let's get a microphone for him, if you could, please. And just come up and come, come stand here by me. And uh, Pastor Shannon has been running up and down. So tell us what's, uh, what's happening. Well, it's, it's been epic, Pastor. So. Throughout the night, everyone's just been responding. As Evangelist Ted's been speaking, Pastor Eric, yourself, Pastor. And so it's been breaking out. It's been absolutely breaking out. And people have been consistent with the calls. 
Well, in the call center, uh, we're about to go to another shift, so even then, we'll see it continue to, to break through. Just amazing at the 518 right now, 519 actually, and uh, what's still coming in. Now, this, this place, I don't even know what that is, North Carolina. The people need to learn, can we do penmanship for the people back to the faith? Like, seriously, who did you get to run the call center? A bunch of illegals that just came across the border. I mean, seriously, it's hard to, it's very hard to read the names here. Even, anyway, I know $300 from some place in North Carolina. Thank you. Sorry that the thing has been written down by illegals. Um, <laughs> yes, Christopher, we don't know where you're from, but in the United States, $300, and Bruce, $25 from Reading. Yes, sir. So we've got like 12 minutes left. I think we've got another update coming. You do? Yes, One sir. More. When are you going to get that to I'm me? I'm going to run over for it right now. You are? Yes, sir. Do you know how many calories you burn? How many steps are you getting in there? I'm burning off all the fat for my wife's birthday month. <laughs> Her birthday month. <laughs> Very clever, Pastor Shannon. All right, we'll yes, wait for that final update. Um, in about 11 minutes, we go off the air. About 11 minutes. I just had another businessman say they believe in God for the closing on their house, and they want to sell $10,000. Um, and of course, they want to know how to do that. So. But thank you, thank you to that individual. Um, we pray for that quick closing to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, um, so, Dr. Shuttlesworth, I presume. <laughs> thank you for blessing us tonight. And I didn't bring you here so you could come with a checkbook, but you blew us away, really. But you're part of this, so I mean, let me just work it out. So you, let me see, uh, you gave 10 and then you gave 25, so that's what, 35, so we do this here, 35,000, we divide that by six, what do you say, 300? 300. 35,000 divided by 300. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> it's like point three, point, <laughs> point zero, 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 0.0003 of a bus. <laughs> Something went wrong with that one. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard to uh, calculate when you're laughing. And you know how the calculator doesn't clear? Who, who knows that? 117. Huh? <laughs> He's gonna do it. <laughs> 116 point six buses. So one of the buses will be point six of a bus. It's gonna only have two tires, half of a bus. So Minus how many of you fit on the bus? Sixty-five plus. 60, that will be thirty-five people, and the thing will be dragging its tail as it goes through the streets of Antonio River. So thank you for that. I mean, so, I mean, how many, how many people you say we put on a bus? 65. <laughs> no. Plus, yeah, 65 to 100, but 65. Oh, a minimum, that's 7,500 people coming to the main. Wow. Okay. And on the, on the big size of 10,000 people that you've just paid for to come to the crusade wow. and go back home. So thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. So, uh, Last year, Brother Rodney paid for one of the tent crusades yes. in 2023. Amen. So that's, uh, was it Atlanta or was it, no, it was uh, Buffalo. You, you paid for Buffalo. Wow. Amen. And we'll send one down to run around with your cows. <laughs> Amen. They're doing that now in West Virginia, breeding buffalo with cattle. Are they all? It's called beefalo. Oh. That's true. I've heard of beefalo. <laughs> Actually, bison is very good meat. Very good meat. I've been eating a bison, bison steak every day. It's a, it's a low-fat meat. So I've been doing bison, bison steak. 
and I'm on a special diet. Wonderful. And meat, you know, meat. I'm a meat eater. <laughs> and especially when I heard that they wanted to see bugs, crickets, and uh, they were promoting cockroach milk the other day. Oh, they said the cockroach milk has got more nutrition. You can, in actual fact, if you Google right now, you can order cockroach milk sent to your house. Oh, no. Comes in nice cartoon. cartoon. Well, I think if you drink it, you're running away when the light comes on. <laughs> <laughs> Where did my why, wife go? <laughs> that's, why, that's why they have churches that are in the dark, because they will be drinking cockroach milk in the coffee bar uh. and the thing of the church. If you switch the lights on, the church disappears. <laughs> Where's the pastor? He's hiding behind the platform. <laughs> Where did Ethel go? Yeah. No, so they wanted to see bugs and crickets and stuff like that. And then I said, no, I'm a steak, I'm a beef eater, I'm a steak eater. I eat meat, I eat chicken, I eat fish. And, uh, yeah, it was very funny. So somebody saw the branding clip that we put out, you know, on my Instagram. So the comment said, that looks like really painful for the cows. Um, did they get hurt? So, <laughs> like, you're branding a cow. Work it out. I mean, so our comment is, uh, no, teams of medical doctors are standing by to administer anesthetic to them. And they, so somebody said, okay, I understand. Sorry, I know you're being facetious. Somebody else said, Oh, thank you. You're so kind to animals. I mean, when you brand them, they go, I mean, they don't like that. No cow likes that. But it's a momentary happening. And um, <laughs> I would say, I'm really going to brand them when I eat them. <laughs> They're going to get branded when we eat them. So, um, and these are people that, you know, they eat chicken, they eat fish. They don't know how that poor fish, that poor fish came out of the boat, came on the boat. <laughs> and they, you know, they still ate it. They ate the fish, didn't bother them. And the chicken. Praise God. Hmm. Well, we've got five minutes, so we just sit quietly. <laughs> <laughs> and let's wait for the update. Can you text Pastor Shannon so you've got five minutes <laughs> for the update? Hmm. When Brother Rodney and I were young, they used to sing songs you've never heard of. I was thinking, you remember that song? I'll trust in you, Lord. I'll trust in you. You've been so faithful. Lord, you've been so true. You've never failed me. It's a long time ago. When I failed you, I'll trust in you, Lord. I'll trust in you. How many ever heard that? Just my wife and this gentleman in the middle. A long time ago. <laughs> and Rodney. How about you say for four minutes? Say, I'm going to trust God. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate you letting me come, Brother Rodney. Thank no, you. No, thank you for coming. Spirit. And you know what? When I was looking at Mr. I was going to wear a blue one. And I felt, no, wear black. So when you said you saw in the vision of everything looked black, yeah, and you were here. And I was wearing black. So pretty cool. I can count on two hands the number of times I've seen something like that. Hmm. In forty nine years. Wow. So this was strategic for some reason. Yeah. Amen. And I thank God for it that we could have a small part too. Thank you. Three minutes left. 
quickly, hurry up. Shannon's running, Pastor Shannon's running from, like, he, I don't know how many times he's done the 250 meter dash. <laughs> he's mean. <laughs> he's running. <laughs> Run. 520. We just went over 520. Wow. So, what did we start? We started at 419, is yeah, it? Yeah, three. It yes, was 419, three. wasn't it? Yeah, 419. We started, so it's a, it's a hundred. Wow. And 1,000 that came in tonight in the four hours. I mean, come on, let's just thank That's the Lord. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for everyone that's sown tonight, that's, that's given. They're all a part of this great harvest of souls. Thank you that the buses are moving in Cape Town. The taxis are moving in Cape Town. The buses are moving in a new city. We never knew that there would be buses <laughs> moving on Tanarivo in Madagascar. Thank you that many lemurs will be brought to the meeting. <laughs> and we give you praise, honor. Thank you for Brother Ted, Sister Bonnie. Yes. What a great blessing they've been to us tonight. And Lord, bless each and every person as they've sown seen here. And I pray, even as we run into tomorrow night, the final night of this solathon, we'll see what you're going to do. As Brother Praise. Shannon comes running out of breath, we have a <laughs> hundred dollars from some junction in Missouri. Again, it's a person with no penmanship. Another hundred dollars from James. Deborah, a hundred dollars and $10 from somebody that I don't know. I can't even pronounce the name. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Do not miss the final broadcast tomorrow night of this live Solathon. Coming to you from Studio B, River Tampa Bay Church, Revival Ministries and National. Thank you to Dr. Ted, Sister Bonnie, Dr. Gonyan. Thank you to all of you that have been here, all these men that have just their wives have been held up on the other side, and uh, we've been babysitting them here tonight. Which, anyway, we love you so much. It's been an awesome night. Great night. That's it. And thank you so much. Thank you. If I can talk to you, Preston, and then just. The Lord said to me, Run to the nations. I came to light a fire. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, you're going to win souls and you're going to bring in the harvest of souls. the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got a brand on the inside of you. So we're going to see the harvest come in. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not going to have my country. You're not going to have my nation. is going to be shaken by the hand of God. I see Africa ablaze.